This episode is brought to you by Simple Contacts. And this episode is also brought to you by ShipStation. I love it. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me, as always, is my co-host, Nick Mason. I'm here. I'm having a great time. Do you know what today is, Mason? No. Oh, yes, I do. What is it? It is. It's the fifth anniversary of the Weekly Planet. Roughly, probably, yes. Probably something like that, around right? Then, yeah, around we, then. We started about this time in 2013. Wow. We were younger men. We were better men in a lot of ways. You were a younger man. <laughs> I've just I've, I've just recently blossom, blossomed into my youth. Wow. Well, congr- congratulations. Thank you. I feel very youthful. And exuberant? Yes. Well, that's good. You Look know how- which way my baseball cap's pointed. <laughs> Sideways? Yeah, that's right. And also Side your hat's there. inside out. <laughs> Yep. You're doing it all. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Very good. Uh, also, speaking of youth and exuberance, our friend over at uh, the Steel Wars podcast, Steel Saunders, he's had a bloody... The man himself. The man himself. He's had a bloody bit of good luck and good fortune in his life. He's won a billion dollars and he's quitting podcasting. Because oh, why wouldn't the dream. you? dream. <laughs> oh. oh. No, he had a son. Yes, he did. He's, uh, him and his wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little boy named. You got the names there? Well, I don't have them there. I don't they're, wanna, in my, I don't they're already in I don't want to me- mess it up. It's Harrison Mark Leonard Saunders. Very good. Mm-hmm. You may recognize some of those names from people that still follows around the world. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and will forever. So that's really good Congratulations, news. Steele and Jackie. Congratulations to the Saunders family. Mm. All three and of Jerry, them. And Jerry, his cat. And Jerry the cat. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. it. Exactly. Yep. You met Jerry? You yes. Met Jerry. Yeah, yeah. Good on Jerry. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic news. Uh, just before also we get into the show, Mason, I just want to quickly shout out to my wife's podcast, Just Make the Thing, because I was on it earlier this week. Oh, I'll yeah. link it below, but basically we talk about aging and getting older. We were going to ask you on, but because you're only blossoming into you. Then why would you bother? Exactly. exactly. Completely. But you yeah. just, you I was just too busy it. skateboarding, obviously. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. That's... I actually came to your door, but my hands were full of fidget spinners. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't operate the handle. So I had to just leave. <laughs> So it was, it was actually a lot of fun. Is that, is that in the correct cusp of like out of touch? <laughs> it's absolutely. Because fidget spinners are done. It's well. But, it's, but they're not so far done that it's a like, they're not, they're not retro novelty anymore. Yeah. They're just, they're just lame and dumb, right? Yeah. You'd see them on a midday talk show. Yeah, right. Now, like about now. Like a, Along uh, with dabbing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the perfect, uh-huh. it's the perfect time has passed. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you want to check that out, that's a bit of a bloody... Uh, Yep. I don't know, it's just a bit of a reflection. If you can if you can take that reflection and turn it into like a one second soundbite. How are you feeling about aging? It's all right. Oh, nice. <laughs> Great. I was going to ask you, but no point, right? No point, right? Yeah. All mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. And we've got a stack of news this week, Mason. Yeah. Almost enough to do a whole episode on, but we can't because we've got a bloody showdown to get to. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> we can't do that two weeks in a row. People will get upset. So let's burn through this as quickly as we can. What if we want to, what if this is, we could do a grand experiment to see if people get upset. So we'll even label the episode as such. Yep. Mm -hmm. Even put it in the time codes. Yep. And then not do it. And even if we get this done quickly, I'll just leave like 30 minutes of just nothing, of dead air. Oh, that's a good call. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. Just edit in a cough, maybe. And here's the thing maybe up to this point, we don't even know if we're going to do the (laughs) superhero showdown. So we're we're just going to leave this open. Here we go. Maybe we'll get to a point where we're like, well, that's the show, everybody. Bye. <laughs> oh, man. But it's, uh, I know you hate this, Mason, but there is Star, Star Wars news. I've got, I've got it up at the top. Ugh. Okay. Do you mind if we press Look, on with I, this? I, I, um, I do hate Star Wars news, as you know. Yeah. But I appreciate that you didn't preface it with some sort of grand <laughs> charade. We don't have time for a grand charade, Mason. Mm-hmm. I've got 30 minutes of silence to get to, all right? That's true, yeah. Okay. I mean, you're going to have to record that silence later. <laughs> That's true. You're going to have to wait till I leave and then record the silence. <laughs> so, Okay, so Kathleen Kennedy, who you know as the president of Lucasfilm, mm-hmm. she, uh, she's actually had her contract cancelled and she was thrown down a flight of stairs and into an active volcano. Huh. Yeah. Why'd they build the Hang stairs? On. No, sorry. I read that wrong. Okay. Her contract was renewed for three years. So oh, that sounds better for despite, her. Actually, yeah. oh, despite all yep. the rumors yep. mm-hmm. uh, and speculation, which I'm sure we've talked about here, yeah. of Lucasfilm are very unhappy with how she's running mm-hmm. the show yep. and that she's definitely going to be fired this September were 
that that uh, yeah that right. Was what people uh-huh. were saying. Uh-huh. It, it's the opposite of that. Mm-hmm. That's not to say that people that she won't be fired between now and three years. People get fired all the time. Uh, but but if, at least this way she'll take away three years of huge executive salaries. Exactly. Regardless of how much work she does. So there you go. So obviously mm-hmm. uh, Disney are very happy with the way things are going, the way mm-hmm. she's running things. Bob Iger even said last week, your dad, Thank you. that the call to make Solo come out in May was his and his alone. Yep. And he takes full responsibility and was thrown down a flight of stairs into a volcano. I'm sorry for your loss, Mason. No, he had a good run. It's fine. <laughs> also, I kept saying to him, dad, yeah. dad, Bob Iger, my dad. Why are we building these? <laughs> why, why would you put a flight of stairs above an active volcano? Why would you build anything on the top of an active volcano? So he built the stairs, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. By, by hand. How yeah, weird. I guess maybe it was like, because yeah, you know some dads like build a boat in their basement or whatever. Larry Bird paved his own driveway when he was playing, playing NBL, yeah. NBA. What, at the same time? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I guess the NBA. I guess the Australian Basketball League is much no, lower he, pressure. His NBA, yeah, Larry yeah. Bird is NBA. Uh-huh. <laughs> but literally at the same time. Yeah, he, that's right. They he demanded a basketball court be built next to his driveway, and he would come on and off the court, <laughs> and he would pave it. That's right. That's commitment to both driveway-ing and NBA-ing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there you go. How do you feel about that? Hurst? Is that part of? Remember, remember you can get that Jordan versus Bird like Tiger. Oh, electronics game. Electronics yeah, yeah. game. Was there, was there some, was there driveway paving in that? I mean, driveway paving mini game? Almost certainly. Mm-hmm. Were any of those games good? Yes. Were they? I played one and it wasn't like a branded one, but it was like this one, it was like a Vietnam one where you would go like in between huts yeah. and you could like machine gun people or you could like hurl a grenade around a corner. It was amazing. But how many, how many guys did you have? Because normally there was like four Oh, you know, you yeah. can see the outline of the yeah, yeah yeah I think that maybe there's like it was like it's like a four guy span maybe four or five great yeah well I love that you love the game Vietnam killing the Vietnamese killing the locals how do you know I was killing the Vietnamese I was <laughs> <laughs> it was called Vietnam Vietnam killing the locals killing the locals yeah, by yeah. Tiger I would argue that that game issues aside of <laughs> killing the locals yes. was probably not a good game no absolutely game not play no. wise yeah. No. Yeah. No, I don't think any of them are good. There must have been one good one. No, because they're all essentially the same crap. Yeah. Yeah. If you want a good handheld system, get an N gauge, all right? Oh, the Nokia N gauge. Get N gauged mm-hmm. with the Nokia N gauge. Yeah. You got to take the battery out of the back of the phone or whatever to put a game in. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. That lasted like four minutes, that system. Oh, but what classic games emerged from it? They probably had a need for speed or, had a or a road rash. They, they definitely had a... Had a oh, they might have been in... Oh, no, every, I think everyone's got Tetris. I, think, yep. mm-hmm. I don't know if the, who owns that or what owns that. Russia owns it. I don't know. That's how they got <laughs> into our system because everyone's putting <laughs> Tetris under yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, what do you think, though, about Kathleen Kennedy uh, back for another three years? Are you surprised? Not really. I mean, who are they going to replace her with? I don't know. Someone else, I guess. Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, I just feel. <laughs> don't know somebody who used to work at Comcast or something. I don't sure. Know. I see. That's. I don't know any of the details of these. Yeah. This is this this is above my pay grade. Yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, people are saying there's people at Lucasfilm like Dave Filoni who is in charge of like Clone Wars and Rebels, and he what? and just doing crime. Just doing crime. He does Dave a lot of crime. Filoni. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, but he, I, I, I don't think, as far as I know, he's had experience running a studio before like she's worked with Spielberg and produced like Jurassic Park and a bunch of other films like there's a difference between being the creative person and and doing this side of things Mm -hmm. you know so yeah look and also the last I think she's got three of the top five highest grossing grossing films of of all time like from the last like run of Star Wars films yeah right and you can also argue that they're Star Wars and they're all going to do well or whatever but Phantom Menace isn't in there as far as I know maybe it is or well, the Clone Wars isn't in there. Whatever that second, the Attic Attack of the Clones. Uh-huh. Yoda's doing a flip. That one. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, sure. Anyway. No, I get it. Yeah. Uh, look again. I think. I think despite people going, oh, you know, I hated the Last Jedi. I hated Solo. Whatever. Mm. The financial track record is there, and yeah. that's all they care about. Exactly. And I think it's also done a really good job of bringing in new fans. Mm-hmm. As well, because it's everywhere. It's catering to all demographics and all markets, except China, who doesn't give a shit about Star Wars. <laughs> Apparently because, yeah, they didn't get it in like the 70s or 80s. So when they roll in a new Star Wars film, now they're like, look, Mark Hamill's in Star Wars. They're just like, what? <laughs> you know mean what- that guy from Wing Commander? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there you bloody go. Do you mean the Giver? <laughs> The Giver? The Giver. What's the Giver? We've had conversations about the Giver many times. Explain to me again. It's an, it was an anime 
about... Explain it to me like I didn't care last time you explained it. Okay, cool. Well, anyway, <laughs> so the guy who was like this this anime about, and probably, I think probably a manga as well, it was about a, a kid and he finds like a super bio power suit and yep. he can shoot lasers out of it and whatever. And there's a live action version of Mark Hamill's in it. What's he in it? Can't See the remember. suit? The voice of the suit? See the remember. kid? What's he doing in that no, suit? I think he might be the, the mentor? I think he might be the guy. The, the guy in the suit? Yeah. The Giver. Yeah, The Giver. Okay, good. I'd have to look it up. Is it better than the TV show My Secret Identity with Jerry O'Connell? No. Okay, then. What is? <laughs> Nothing. That that show is all about youth, yep. which you know I love. Yeah. And well, you're in it. Of course and, you love it. Exactly. And flying around on spray cans. That's right. You know, so... I know what it's about. Mm-hmm. Okay, what else we got here? We got some casting for the uh, the Birds of Prey film. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm Mer- listening. Mary, are you looking up Mark Hamill yes. for The Giver? Do you want to do that first? Okay, yeah. Before okay. we do this news? Okay. The Giver 1991. Here we go. Now he looks like he is The Giver. Nice. This is a film. Jimmy Walker's in it. Who's that? You know the guy on in that sitcom who was like, Don't all mate! You know that guy? I know him from The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that well, reference in The Simpsons. Well, that's, that's who he is. Okay, good, yeah, good. Uh-huh. Yeah. He was in the show Good Times. Anyway. No, he is. The CIA yeah. agent Max Reed, who's played by Mark Hamill. That's right. He's The Giver. Nice. Anyway, you have different news? I'm oh, ready no. to listen. No, let's just do this. Yeah, let's talk about the guy for two hours. <laughs> I don't recognize any other names in this. Mm. That's not to say that they haven't gone on to have illustrious careers under different pseudonyms. Absolutely, completely actors. different names, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, Birds of Prey film. Yeah. Uh, we've got our Huntress and Black Canary. Uh, uh, I believe Mary Elizabeth Winstead is going to be Huntress. Mm-hmm. And Black Canary will be Journey uh, Smollett Bell, who I do not know. I think she's in True Blood and some other stuff. Sure, okay. As of late. Uh, right. Good casting, it seems. Mm-hmm. Well, I only really know one of them. That's Mary Elizabeth, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Winstead and yep. she's great in everything. 10 Cloverfield Lane and other things she's been in. That one where uh, the superheroes in um, they're at a school or whatever. She's Sky High? Sky High. All right. Yeah, she's good in The Thing prequel, even though it's a oh, yeah, terrible that's right. film, yeah, but she's okay. good in it. Uh-huh. Scott Pilgrim. Mm-hmm. What else do you want? True de- not True Detective. What was that? Fargo. She's in the last season of Fargo. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, she's okay. great. I think Killing that, it. Yeah, I think that casting's uh, really good. And it seems like, from the looks of things, though I don't want to get ahead of myself, <laughs> because, you know... Who knows? But they might make this one. <laughs> so, Terrific. Yeah. So DC are moving ahead with several films that yeah. might actually look like they're getting They're gonna actually going to make them, yeah, right. Which is great. How close do you think they've gotten? Like, what do you think the closest to full production they've gotten to before they're like, now nah, pulling the plug on this one? Justice League Mortal was like days away. Yeah, right. Yeah, when that was all ready to go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like it was days from filming, yeah. Right. Mm. I reckon there's probably one. There's at least one that they've filmed it and they've gone. Like New like Fantastic Four audit. Yeah, yeah. Where they New Mutants it? is probably the... That that one's you maybe not, not coming out, out anymore. I reckon it will. If they're releasing Dark Phoenix, which yeah, we right. will talk about, <laughs> I, think just, yeah. I think they will. Yeah, because they're, they're in a weird limbo, though. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Makes you think, doesn't it? Sure does. Makes you want to do some detecting, Mason. And speaking of detecting, we got a trailer for Creed 2. And the reason I say that is because there's also a trailer for Holmes and Watson. Because, Mason. <laughs> yes? It's a new movie. Wow. What am I doing? What are you get doing? Me, how to get me out of this. Moody. No, let's keep doing this. It's, li- it's all links till the end of the episode. <laughs> there's a bunch of trailers this there week. There's a bunch okay. of trailers. It's okay. true. Let's do Holmes and Watson. Okay. So it's basically, it's the team, uh, the, you know, Will F- Farrell and uh, John C. Riley, Step, Step Brothers, Brothers uh, the basketball one. Semi pro. No, sorry, no, they didn't do that together. Uh, Talladega Day Nights, Nights yep. which I didn't like. I've only seen once. I didn't really like it. I didn't love it. I uh, diminishing returns for those ones. I feel it's better than Semi Pro. Yeah, right. Which is just a sports movie with some jokes in it. Some jokes. Some jokes. Yeah, right. Not good yeah. ones and not a lot, but yeah, there's some. But there's some. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think of this Holmes and Watson trailer? I as soon as I finished watching it, I said. I don't know if it's going to be any good, but I'll still definitely watch it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you like the references where they're doing a selfie and uh, and they're like, "No shit, Sherlock," because it's like it's modern day, but also yeah, right. Uh-huh. Is it? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's I'd not. Say, I think that the 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 charisma of John C. Riley and Will Ferrell sort of carries that off. I think. Yeah. If you'd gotten if you know if we'd gotten a Vince Vaughn and a. Uh, a One boot. of the Wilsons. You know, remember that Google movie they did? Yeah, Google. The remember when Dad's they, Googled. Dad's Googled. Vince Vaughn <laughs> and Owen Wilson. Remember that one? And it was all like, they're all dancing to bloody... Um... Boy, we're not good at this this week, are we? 
uh, Kesha. <laughs> no, the 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 rapper guy, Macklemore. Okay, remember right. The, remember that trailer? Is he in that? I don't no, he's not that. in it. But there's like a there's a se- there's a sequence where they put on Macklemore. Like even in the trailer, it was eight months after like Thrift Shop had, had, right. had come and gone. Oh, it wasn't the song where Macklemore insists he's not gay, but he's cool with it. No, it wasn't that one. No. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I, I think if it were in the hands of some other people, I'd be like, ugh, but they have a certain charm. And I yeah. think maybe I have a certain amount of faith that they will make this a good movie. Yeah, I think I, I'm with or, you or, on or, or at the very least, I think they are very good at just 110% committing to whatever stupid scenario they're in. Absolutely, they are, yeah. And if you just let them do that and roll through and just keep saying some fun, like eventually organically you get some good funny stuff i'm just checking who's directing it because yeah. it's not the you know the guy who did bloody um... it's a co it's a it's a co- it is a cohen but it's, it's a is it eaton cohen yeah it's eaton cohen is yeah. it related no, it's no a they're cohen. unrelated yeah, yeah. yeah so he uh he did get hard the one where w- oh, he Will Ferrell goes, goes to prison. I, that was, that I saw that it's okay it's fine uh-huh. but he's also written on like beavis and butthead uh get hard uh <laughs> Tropic Thunder. Does he have anything to do with Walk Hard, which is the superior? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, hard comedy movie. No, probably not. Look yeah, like it, so. but yeah, but he's done some decent stuff. Yeah, here, right, okay. So we'll see. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Did you see the house, which was the Will Ferrell, Amy Poehler movie, where they atrocious. they open the casino in the yeah, house? No, I, no I didn't. See, I also heard, didn't see it. It's, I've heard it because it looks fine, but apparently yeah. it's just dreadful. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. What What is the difference? I wonder because it's is it a case of because it looks way more straight laced than say uh, Anchorman or something like that, or a, even a even a Get Hard. Yeah. Where it's like we have a loose element of plot and we'll just throw some jokes in and see how it goes. But I feel like maybe the house is what like Amy Poehler and and Will Ferrell just sort of hired guns there to be likable and say some lines. Yeah, right. Yeah. Maybe that's the key. Mm, you know, very possible. Mm. I mean. And also, do they even do they have chemistry together? Because they're both amazing comedic actors, but maybe they don't work well. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Together, yes. maybe they couldn't spin that pig shit into gold, as the <laughs> right, expression yeah. goes. But I also, it's, I mean, it's odd that they. It's really odd to me that two comedians who are very famous for just like improvising yeah. on set and as a career, yeah, they just be like, yeah, just say some lines, yeah. What do you got? But again, I haven't seen it, so me neither. Maybe it's mm. amazing. Let's not see it though. Nah. Should we, though, see Creed 2, the sequel to Creed, yes. which is a sequel to Rocky Balboa, yes. which is a sequel to Rocky 5, which is a sequel to Rocky 4, which mm-hmm. is a sequel to Rocky 3, which is a sequel to Rocky 1, which is a prequel to Rocky 2. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> it's good work there. I wondered how you were going to pull out of this dive. <laughs> and then you did the fun... Because I'm like, well, comedy's all about a rule of threes, and there's more than three in this... What's he going to do? He's gone off book. Is he going to do a double rule of threes? What's he? No, you, you turned it around at the end. It was pretty good. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think of this trailer, though? Uh, good. Oh, you know what I did enjoy about it? Yeah. Is it something that I didn't, didn't even occur to me? Is that we're going to have something of a face-off between... Rocky and yeah. Ivan Drago. They're probably not going to hit each other. No. I would like to see that kind of. <laughs> but it's also, it doesn't seem this? like that kind of movie. How about, how's, how's about this? Here we go. They meet They meet in the ring because mm-hmm. they're both the coaches. They have, They stare each other down. There's no word spoken, but we know. That one of them has to fight Logan Paul. Exactly. <laughs> and then and they, they, they speak. Oh, they don't speak. They just, they just stare at each other. And you know there's you know all these decades of history behind it. And then they go their separate corners. And then Creed and the and Drago's son come in and they fight. And then there's victory and, and you know lives are changed or whatever. And then credits roll. And at the end, Ivan Drago's coming out like a side door in an alley. And just Rocky just hits him with a chair. <laughs> like just pulps him in the alley. Just post runs, credits? Run, yeah, post credits. Just runs at him from behind. <laughs> Like in, in the alley and just wallops him with like a baseball bat or something. And he goes down and he just hits him a few more times and he runs away. <laughs> Amazing. I'd watch that. I would watch that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you save it till the post credits because it doesn't have to break the flow of the rest of the movie. Exactly, yeah. You just have your, your ridiculous it's, hit with a chair. Exactly. It's, 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 not, it's not Rocky's story anymore, mm. you know. It's Creed's story. So That's right. A bit of a teaser, you know. Yeah, a bit of a teaser. Mm-hmm. Why do you think, though, Creed is fighting this guy? Because they're saying... It's like it's hinted out in this trailer that he's not doing it because of his father. Probably money. Probably money. But also, he doesn't know his father. That's true. Yeah, like he's an illegitimate child. He was. He grew up in you know in foster homes and foster care or whatever. Uh-huh. And then when he was ten, he was taken out by Creed, the original Creed's wife. Yes. Who mm-hmm. is not his mother? 
mm. but but raised him. Thank you for the summary because I would have I didn't remember. Don't remember any of the, that. the blood yeah. of Creed. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, what do you think it is that, he, that he's? Why is he doing it? Probably has to save the rec center. I don't think any of that thing. Do you think he might have to save his girlfriend's music career? Because she's going deaf or something? Yes. From the last one? Mm-hmm, yeah. So she's bad at music? Well, that's why she's going deaf. Okay. The music caused <laughs> the terrible her deafness, yes. Yeah, because, uh-huh. yeah. you know, he's got, a, he's got a newborn kid and whatever. and he seemed Yeah. To, I wonder whether it's a, a blend of Rocky Three, where his hubris kind of gets him defeated. Yes. And then Rocky Four, where he's fighting a far superior Russian opponent. I wonder if that's what they're kind of doing doing here you, that, th- you, th- you think it's a remake of sorts with yeah the both. do you so, think that so means like. there's going to be two big old fights in this movie but possibly yeah i think he's going to get beaten badly uh-huh and maybe maybe there's two drago fights or maybe he's beaten by somebody else right okay. but i don't i don't know i think also if somebody like pe- the media was maybe the real- robot beats him up maybe the, robot- maybe the robot's kid beats him up <laughs> <laughs> i think if the if the media that was relentlessly hounding you that this guy killed your father and he's a greater boxer than you and whatever, then yeah, right maybe on. that's the he's just trying to prove a point. Also, that dude is scary as fuck. Like the, the new guy, new Drago, the new Drago, yeah, looks terrifying. Yeah, because yeah. he towers over Michael yeah, he's G- huge. B. Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Michael B. Jordan's not a massive guy anyway, but yeah, but there, there's also there's that massive. You remember from Rocky three, four? There is that huge height difference between. Creed and, yeah, and Rocky, right, and right. that's real because Stallone's not a big guy either. But that's true. Dolph Lundgren's one hundred feet tall, <laughs> and still yeah. is to this day. Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. He keeps he's, he's just coming into coming into his youth like you are. Yeah, so. great, good for him. Yeah, yeah. This looks great though. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I I can't wait. I think it's going to be terrific. Would yeah. you Would you watch a Creed three? Yeah, I watch all of these. Huh. What if there if was the follow up if... to Rocky beating up Creed in an alley with a chair? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, what about yeah? What were you going to say? I was going to say Ham. Do you want do you want four more sequels? Do you want there to be a Creed six? Not necessarily. Okay. Uh, but I, I like this. I think there's an you know, there's a bit of juice in this. Yeah. Because they true. got four decent Rocky movies. Mm-hmm. Well, five because eventually because they, yeah, right, uh-huh. they didn't do because um, five is terrible apparently. Yep. I haven't seen any Rocky Baba. But no, I think there's depending how they do it, yeah, I think there's room for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Next trailer? Yeah. I didn't actually ask whether you've seen this, but have you seen Fantastic Beasts and the Crimes of Gay Wizard Hitler, the new trailer? I have seen the new trailer. And the biggest twist of that is that, that snake could be a woman. And the internet was up in arms. Now, this this uh, some people came up with this twist. They're like, what do you think about this? And I'm like, I don't understand. And they're like, <laughs> you know, from the last Harry Potter movie. And I went, I haven't seen the last Harry Potter movie. Okay, do you want me to break it down for you? Yes. Okay, so in the original Harry Potter films... Yes. Uh, and books. Voldemort yes. has a snake. It's a big old snake. Yes. As big as you can possibly imagine. I can imagine a pretty big snake. Well, it's as big as that. It's actually, wow! It's actually not as big as the snake in the second Harry Potter, so it's not that big. Well, I was going to say, I remember there being a snake in Harry Potter and having not seen the last movie. It's like anaconda size. Have yeah, you ever seen the movie okay. Anaconda? Yeah. It's like that size. Wow! Yeah, maybe a little bit bigger. Still wow! <laughs> yeah. So basically, it's called Nagini. Uh, yeah. You don't know anything of it other than it's a snake. And you haven't seen these movies. I'm gonna spoil a little bit of it. But Voldemort puts a part of his soul in. in I know what in a Horcrux is. Okay, good. But I didn't know you knew it was in a snake. I uh, now I do. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Nice. And has to be. And Neville Longbottom beheads it in the final Harry <laughs> Potter movie, right? <laughs> yep. But it turns out that that snake was at one point friends with Johnny Depp, the gay wizard Hitler. Yeah. Uh, though I don't think he's gay. We'll get into that. Oh, they've changed it. Well, I don't think he ever was. Uh, Jude Law is. Uh, Dumbledore, and I think <laughs> this is there's a lot of slander in this, depending on how you interpret any of this. Well, they are okay. So sidebar. So yes. basically, they were friends, and the implication is that Jude Law, Dumbledore, was in love with Grindelwald. Yep, but it wasn't reciprocated. I and, see. Yeah, so that and so and Grindelwald kind of manipulated that to kind of uh, kind of sway uh, Dumbledore to right. certain opinions. So and that's why. Things. That's why. Dumbledore keeps saying in these trailers he can't move against Grindelwald mm. because it'd be totes orcs. It could be totes orcs, but I yeah. think it also might be like the Wizarding Council's like, you can't do anything, Dumbledore, because you're too wrapped up in this and he mm. killed your sister or something, maybe. Yeah. That was... It'd be totes orcs. It'd be totes orcs also, yeah. Mm. So that snake, though, yes. was friends with Grindelwald and was also a woman, and this is apparently some kind of condition that some people have in the a magical community, specifically the Indonesian area, which is where this woman is from, where it's kind of like being a vampire, but you turn into a snake. Do you mean a werewolf? Kind of like being a werewolf. Correct. Thank you. Where you turn into a snake, but it gets to the point where you just 
turn into a snake forever. I see. So it's like an affliction that eventually gets you and everything about you becomes Now, is this another of these weird retcons that J.K. Yes. Rowling's yes. been doing for the last yes. 10 years yes. or whatever? Yes, Right. So this isn't in the original books. It's not like, is the... Is the no. uh, a condition where you can turn into a snake forever. This is a new thing. It's a new condition where you can turn into a snake or whatever. Correct. Right. Yeah. Huh. So people are up in arms or indifferent. And mm-hmm. there's also people saying, why is it like the one Asian person in these films, like a snake woman? There are other Asian people in this film and in these movies. Uh, Cho Chan, I think her name is from um, the Harry Potter films. But yeah, so there's a, there's a bit of uproar about the change in the law and, and the race. And, and, and can a person even be a snake? That's also a big point of contention. Well, we'll find out, <laughs> won't we? Because I'm in the prime of my youth. Yes. I feel currently I can do anything. So see you in a couple of weeks when I'm a snake. Great. But you can't come back from being a snake. You know that, right? No, I can. Oh, okay. Because of youth. Because of youth. I mm-hmm. wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. What do you think of any of that? Uh, look, I don't have many opinions about that because mm. most of it I've just, I've just learned. Yep. But there sure is a lot of fantastic beasts in this trailer. And where do you find them? In they're in the just in the case. They're always in the they're case. Just, if you don't open the case, <laughs> everything will be fine. But uh, I, I in the last couple of trailers, I'm like, why are they still calling these fantastic beasts when there's very few fantastic beasts? But this trailer, they've proven me wrong. There's heaps of fantastic beasts More in this. More than ever. Should call it. They should have called it heaps of beasts. <laughs> Fantastic Beasts 2, heaps of beasts. <laughs> You're not wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought this trailer looked really good, though. Same, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't even mind the heavy Johnny Deppness in it, which I normally do in yeah. these trailers. And we all sighed when he turned up in the, in the first film or yeah. whatever. But uh, no, this I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah. And maybe we'll do another Harry Potter episode before this movie comes out. How many out. do we have left? Three? Four. Four. Four, Four. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. There's a lot of them in there. There sure is. Yeah. But they're getting better. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're going to have a good ride to the end, Mason. Terrific. So you're going to have a ride to the end. I mean, end. I'm going to have that snake twist spoiled, aren't I? <laughs> yes. But wow. speaking of a ride to the end, Mason, mm-hmm. uh, the Bumblebee trailer. Oh, a new one. you're so good at release. this. Thanks. No, initially I wasn't very good at it, was I? Like the Harry Potter films. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got caught in a web of nonsense, mm-hmm. but I've got myself out of it. Terrific. Uh, so there was an international trailer and a regular trailer mm-hmm. uh, for the Bumblebee movie. There's a lot of G1 style Transformers. There's a video really about is. all of them on my trailer. You can check out below. Uh, but basically, this looks great. It does look great. Yeah. Weird, right? Yeah. Who would have thought in our lifetimes a good Transformers movie? Well, when did Transformers the 80s come out? Do you consider that one a good one? Yes. I would say it's not good. What do you think oh, of that? Oh, it hurts my feelings. I just think, uh, mate, a great animation. And for the day, sure, a lot of that really works. Uh-huh. But I think that movie is not good. Good. You would. I do think that though. I you, said that just yeah. then. Well, you would. I am saying that. And you would. And I do. Yeah. Yeah. What did, but this trailer, did you recognize any Transformers in particular oh. that you went, Ooh. Well, there's a Shockwave. Yeah. There's appearance of Shockwave. Yeah, yeah. Or oh, maybe he's in one of the... Which one? Is that the one eye guy? He's got the one eye and no, the he blaster No, he's in him. He's in him. He's in other ones. What does he do in the... In he's the... just in it. Great. What do any of them do? Stand waste, about. Waste our time is what <laughs> yeah. they do. Yeah. Yeah. But I enjoy Shockwave because he's the one guy who doesn't. He doesn't have a Earth mode because he never came to Earth. Yeah. Or he never got transformed at the Ark. So he's just a 35 foot long flying ray gun. <laughs> just flying around. Didn't he say on Cybertron to hold the fort while Megatron went to Earth? Like he ran the resistance or something? Probably. Yeah, good on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we also see Optimus Prime. Yes. In his classic Optimus Prime mode. Yeah. But I guess he'd be space truck. He'd be a space truck, yeah. Sure. We see... Uh, yeah, this, this one... They've they've gone out of their way to be cartoon accurate. Like the yeah. your star screams and your sky warps and your thundercrackers turn into the the spaceship versions of yes, themselves. The They're kind of the triangular jets. ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Great stuff. There's also bloody tape in his chest. Yes. Whatever his name is. Yeah, tape in his chest. Tape in yeah. his chest. He's got a bloody Jaguar in there. That Jaguar was being in remember it was in two? It was like an infiltration Jaguar? Yeah, I'm, I yeah. Uh huh. But it wasn't tape in its chest, was it? No, it was who knows? Ball of spikes in a satellite? <laughs> right. Was it? Yeah. And, and, and at, one, yeah, at one point, wasn't it just like a bunch of black marbles that turned into a robot? No, that was the first one, wasn't oh, it? Oh, I don't know. None of us do. No, but that's the thing because there was there was there's there was no state. We've, I don't know if you know this, but we've talked at length about the Transformers movies yeah, and I how mean, they're not very good. Done there, yeah. But the, one of the things that it was odd that they threw out was that. Transformers really only have one 
alternate mode. Yeah. And in the movie, it was just like, yeah, they can turn into anything. Yeah. They can scan a vending machine, turn into a vending machine. That's true. Fine. Yeah. You can be a car and then a plane and then a train. It doesn't matter. Doesn't but matter. It, it, you can look exactly like a human. That's cool. It's fine. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Human size, robot size. Doesn't matter. Yeah. You can turn into a big swarm of flying metal bees and then into a truck. It doesn't matter. Because in the in the cartoon as well, and look, a lot of that cartoon isn't good because it's from the eighties. No, I agree. Yeah. Uh the the ship that they crash land on Earth. Yes. Scans the environment and then gives them a mode based on something that's roughly their size. Yes. And then they're stuck like that forever. But yes. in this, it's just yeah, like you said, it's scan literally anything. Mm. Yeah. Whenever you want, also. Well, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Which I guess was for marketing purposes, because then you could just be like, well, now Bumblebee's the this year's Kamara or whatever. That's probably true, so, yeah. But anyway, I I enjoyed the look of this. Mm. It's, ah, looks so good. It does look good. Do you yeah. think it will be good? I think it'll be better than the other ones. <laughs> I, that's not what I said. Yeah. Do you think it will be good? Yes. That's I a did. given. Yeah. <laughs> what you said then. Yeah. I think it will be good. Mm. Like genuinely yeah, good. Yeah, right. And if it's not, what do we do? Um, burn Hasbro to the ground can we like just, their offices can we just continue living our lives oh we could do that yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm saying if we got the opportunity yeah like let's say we went on holiday yeah yeah you and me together yeah we do, and we we do we just, that every year and we were, we were at a, like a like a like a crystal clear lake and a, like a like a log cabin or whatever and we're just chilling out there mm. and I'm like hey look at the other side of the lake it's the Hasbro headquarters yeah we'd go burn it down as okay a that's fine yeah. right, let's do that yeah. if it's bad if it's bad yeah, and yeah, if yeah. we go on holidays and if we're staying in the lake in the Hasbro offices, the headquarters happen yeah. to happen to be across, across from this the lake. other end of the lake. Okay, yeah, yeah deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Mm-hmm. Got a whole lot of Fox and Why, X-Men. Do we have any more Transformers thoughts? I'm trying to think. We've got a couple of triple changes. Yeah, yeah. So one of them is new, I think, and the other one is wasn't a triple changer. Right. And okay. that's Justin Thoreau and Angela Bassett, I believe. And the there you go. Right. And they're gonna give them like personalities and stuff. Can you imagine? You mean not just weird stock. <laughs> Like generic, uh, you know, stereotypes. I know that's what you wanted, Mason, but I know that's, that's what not what we're getting yeah. this time, yeah. apparently. There's so many stereotypes from around the world that they haven't gotten to yet. Where's the where's the Belgian stereotype? You know they what I mean? They did a French hot rod. They did do that, yeah. So why don't they do a Belgian Decepticon or whatever? It's, turns into a waffle maker. <laughs> that's what it does. Yeah. It looks great, like yeah. g- genuinely, and I, I really, and I think a lot of that is the design, yeah, because they look like things, <laughs> yep. and that's okay with me. Yeah, I love that triple changing effect where they're flying and then they land and they run and then they're a car and then they're running yeah. again. I think, and it's you incredible. can actually see it happen, yeah, as opposed to it just being a scramble of tiny minuscule gears that you see right up close. Yeah, yeah. great. Um, also, John Santa's in it. Yeah. Some I think, people have suggested that he might be the original G.I. Joe. I think he's the dude from Mask. There's a character named Burns from Mask. Oh, I think it might be go. in the Mask universe. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, did right, that. Well, I think I gonna... mentioned that in my first trailer. All right. I, I can see yeah. Mask linking together. Mm. I mean, if they, maybe if they acquire some Transformers technology and they're like, let's put it into our cars. Or yeah. And our masks. And our masks. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Cool, man. Okay. This is Fox and also... Uh, X Men news. Yes, uh, this, this, I'll do the first bit that's not X Men news, and then we'll do all X Men news. Sound good? Correct. I feel like that transition wasn't as good as my other transitions, but better than my first transition, which wasn't really anything. Well, they say this. This is my Rocky Five of transitions. It really is. They say open with your second best transition. <laughs> yeah, and then close with your strongest transition. I haven't done that. So you have? Well, do you have one more left? No. Oh, then you've you've really you've ruined this. Thanks. Okay, so Battle Angel, remember that movie? Sort of. Uh, it's coming out December twenty first, or it was because it's. Been... That's already passed that time. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but this of this year I'm talking about mm-hmm. uh, because the Bumblebee movie's opening that date, as is Holmes and Watson, as is Aquaman, as is Welcome to Marwin, which is the one where Steve Carell has dolls and they're helping him with PTSD or whatever. Have you seen those trailers? No, it's pretty good. Is that is that an indie or is it like a wacky CGI comedy? It's uh. It's both, it seems. Okay. Like, it's got a lot of CGI. It looks a bit like the CGI in... Uh, did you ever see Small Soldiers? Yes. Yeah, but it's that, but it's like... Did I ever see Small Soldiers? But it's feelings, One also. of Phil Hartman's finest roles. Yes. He's in that. He is in that. Mm-hmm. And also, Dennis Leary at the end. <laughs> Dennis Leary is in that at the end, yeah. I liked that movie. Does Steve Carell do big movies anymore? Like uh, Evan Almighty yeah. or some uh-huh. stuff. I'm sure he does, but he does yeah, a lot right. of indies. Also, he... He's so rich from the office. I guess that's probably true. So I guess true, he yeah. probably just does stuff that he wants mm-hmm. to do. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so what do you think about that? Battle Angel moving away from Bumblebee, Holmes and Watson, Aquaman, and Welcome to Marwin. Bloody good luck to him. That's what I say. And it was, I think it was a really good move because those movies all would have crushed <laughs> yes. Battle Angel. Battle Angel Alita, that's correct, yeah. yes. So I think that's not, not a bad move at all. Mm-hmm. Also, in Gambit news... <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> uh, it's been pushed from July of 2019. Yep. I feel like every six months I'm just going to announce that it's pushed back mm-hmm, yeah. another year to uh, March of 2020. Also, it's a romantic comedy of sorts. There we go. Uh, there you go. I mean, if it ever comes out, which it won't. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, I guess, pushes it over the Disney um, merger thing. I don't know. I don't know what that is. But <laughs> make it, I guess, or don't. Or don't make it. Is Channing Tatum still attached? <laughs> I guess. Or Great. he isn't. Mm. We haven't heard that he isn't. Yeah. Uh, also, Deadpool 2 is getting a PG-13 Christmas cut with Fred Savage in it. I heard about that. So this is... Mm. This is... he. he, he as I understand it, it's going to be uh, Fred Savage is reprising his role as the kid from The Princess Bride. Yes. And Deadpool is going to be telling the story of Deadpool to him. Is that yes. right? He's taking the Peter, he's taking the Columbo role. Correct. The Peter Falk role. Is he dead? I think he is dead, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's a great movie. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Uh, and a great book. I don't know if you've ever read it. I've never read it. It's good. It's, it's, it's pitched as the premise of it is that it is the condensed version of a, of a real like there's a real book, right? Like there's a there's a there's a historical novel that mm. is filled with you know thousands of pages, of, like a Lord of the Rings esque. Yeah, and whatever. it's and it's but there's you know there's there's pages devoted to you know the economy and the weather patterns or whatever. It's it's a story and it's an almanac or whatever. Yeah. And so the idea is William Goldman who who wrote the book like condensed it. Like it was it, the idea is that when he was a kid, his his grandpa told him the story. Mm. And then one day he tracked down the original book and it was so boring that he's, he was like, oh, my granddad must have just cut out all the boring bits. Right. And so he's condensed the book down into okay. its core elements. So People should do that with Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, they did the movies, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Sure. Anyway, are you going to see this? Because I'm not. No, I don't think I will. Yeah. I think what I'll do is I'll wait for, the, I'll wait for somebody to put up the Fred Savage clips yeah. on YouTube and I'll just watch that. That sounds good to like, me. I think, I think this is... This is a funny bit. Yep. And if they just released it as a as a short, yeah. Uh, or in front of the DVD, or maybe they, re, you know, maybe they there's a new version of the DVD, and it's like you can have a PG version you click through, and then there's that clip, and then it's yeah, that would be fun. But re-releasing it in cinemas just for that mm. is ballsy. I don't know if it's going to work. Well, it depends how much. Look money. at my ballsy. Very good. Mm-hmm. It depends how much money they put into it, which I imagine is not that much. Yeah, I think the stuff they reshot is not going to be crazy special effects or anything. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, I think they'll they'll probably do all right out. I of mean, it. if that is this is this just going is this a is this Deadpool one and two put together? Did I some think oh, it might be. I was, right. Maybe it is. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing is Dark Phoenix has been pushed back from February to June of next year. It's in the summer months. It's going to have a crack at whatever movies come out next year. Correct, In yes. that mm-hmm. time. Yes. Uh, I don't, maybe it'll pay off. Maybe oh. they need to fix it between now and then. Yeah. I don't know, because the trailer came out, and then a day later they announced that they were pushing it back six months or whatever, <laughs> yep. which is an odd move. Uh-huh. But they did it, and the trailer we're is... We're sorry, we're going to fix everything. Yeah. What do th- you think? I can't remember what happens in it. I think that's a good sign that it's not a good trailer. I thought it was okay, right. but there was nothing in it except for one line that, that that made me go, oh, that's interesting. And that one line is Magneto's talking to Professor X and he's like, look, there's always a speech and you're always sorry and nobody cares. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Which kind of sums up these X-Men films. It really does, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. But I really like that line and I really like those actors. Yeah. Uh-huh. But it, it, it is a sense of like, why, that, why yeah. are we doing this still? I also don't care about any of the kid actors, really. No. I mean, I guess... I mean, about you saw a boy Cyclops boy. in... About a boy boy. About a boy boy. I, like, I quite like him. Yeah, even though he, I don't think he's a kid anymore. I think no, he's, he's like an adult, definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I think you're younger than him now. Yeah, I know, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, but it seems like a lot of the story beats from X-Men 3, I mean, also because that is a Dark Phoenix film, yes. in a way. Uh-huh. Yeah. In a way. Mm-hmm. But it's Brotherhood of Mutants in the Woods... And, you know, some of the mutants team are killed by the Phoenix Force or the yep, uh-huh. Jean Grey. And how are they going to stop her? And mm-hmm. are they going to yeah. sacrifice themselves? And, and it even and looks like, color-wise, it looks like the same. Like, it, it looks yeah. like the, the the weird kind of 
saturated grey that the the X the, the flashbacks in X Men Three yeah would were filmed in. I guess yeah. I don't know. There's also no, not there's enough. no alien stuff. There is some space stuff, and we see Jessica Chastain's character who is a Shi'ar or whatever uh-huh, apparently, right. but we don't get any sense of that. Uh-huh. I bet it's like two minutes at the start. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I thought this was the one where they were going to be like, okay, we're going to space and here's aliens and here's the large universe. No, Mason, it's in a forest again. Oh, great. <laughs> because, but I, yeah, I think maybe they've got, they've gone with, well, people don't want that extra element. Yeah. So let's just have a somebody whisper, like an alien whisper in her ear at the start mm. of the movie or something. Great. No good, don't want that. Want aliens. I want a- aliens whispering in their ears in a forest or a church you or whatever's would. happening. You would. Yeah. It's also getting to the point where... This movie is set in 1992. Mm-hmm. The original X Men. It came out in 99, but I think it's set in 2004-ish. Oh uh, yeah, five. Yep. And those guys should be well on the way to being, uh, <laughs> to being Ian McKellen and yeah, Patrick right. Stewart. That's true. And yeah. they're still yeah, 35. They're in the they're in the flush of their youth or whatever. Apparently I say. they yeah. are. Uh huh. I mean, who cares? Because who cares about I mean, this timeline? Is it's ruined, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> do you think they'll do, a, if they're going to bring these guys into the Marvel Universe, do you think they're going to recast them again? Do you think this is the last yes. hurrah for all these actors? Absolutely it is, uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, it would be nice to have a good send-off like on a solid film, but I feel like we also got that with Logan. Yeah, right. That was a really good end to some good films. <laughs> yep, correct. some average films. But if you do look at the list of films here, there's more good than bad. But the bad yeah. really stands out. It really and also does. a lot of the good stuff is from so long ago that it's not really good. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah. like X Men One. Mm. X Men One was definitely good at the time. I think I I rewatched it, you know, five years ago or something, and I'm like, well, this is still good. Yeah, like, the performances and stuff is still good in it. But it does have that. A lot of stuff from that era is quite basic, and if you look at it now, I feel it it looks it seems unfinished. Mm. Like I recently saw some of the some of the first Sam Raimi Spider Man. Yeah, it looks unfinished. Yeah, like there's there's a, there'll be a scene in a coffee shop or a school or whatever, and it looks just like a bad set, like a sitcom <laughs> set for a school or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't look like like now when you see a you know in Spider Man Homecoming where you see a little Tom Holland at school, everything look like they've gone okay. Well, there'll be a There'll be a bulletin board, and let's make fifty real flyers and put yeah. it up. So if you if you pause and you look, it looks like a real school. Yeah. But with some of this sort of stuff, you look at it and you go, "That's just a. Bl- why would there be a blank wall there when there could yeah. be something there? If if this is a real world, why is that? Why is that? You know. And that's that's how a lot of this stuff looks. To Absolutely. Me anyway. Yeah. But I think like action wise, still pretty solid. Yeah. They fight on top of the Statue of Liberty. That's good stuff. And a man turns into a blob, and then he turns into water. Yep. And there's a bit where someone gets hit with the laser, I believe. Nice. And there's the bit where Hugh Jackman cuts that guy's gun barrel off. It's at the start, isn't it? It is at the start. That yeah. is a good introduction to yeah, that it character. is, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. The bad stuff, mm. it's just so overwhelmingly in your face bad. And just flat. Yeah. I don't think X-Men 3, in hindsight, is that much worse than 1 and 2. You're probably right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, it's easily the worst of those three. Yeah, right. But oh. I don't think it's... The massive nosedive that X Men Origins was. Right. Yeah. Oh, but you're right. No, speaking of a nosedive and speaking of <laughs> in your face bad, just the worst. Just the worst. Yeah, that really. That that was a real gut punch at the time. Why was it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anything else on this trailer? No. Nope. We might Wish do there was a, more alien stuff. We might do a video on the X Men timeline or okay. whatever this week. All but, uh, right. We'll All see how right. that goes, Mason, because we haven't recorded it yet. Yeah. But it will go really well. Yeah, but knowing be. us. <laughs> no, knowing us. Uh, knowing us. I mean, I've got youth on my side. Yep. You've got whatever you have. I don't know what Experience. it is. Experience. I've got okay, I've got Matt, the editor. I can send it to Matt. There we <laughs> go. You've got Matt on your side. <laughs> big news, Mason. It is. I mean we had big news last week concerning this, but the big news continues to be so big that it warrants a second News event. A second bite at the cherry? Correct. Is that the expression? It's the news news. It's the news news. Okay, yeah. (laughs) America's number one e-commerce shipping software is now available in the UK. Are you talking about ShipStation? I'm talking about ShipStation, Mason, because if you're selling online, you want to get your orders out quickly and you want to keep your customers happy. And that... Is the good. ship station guarantee? That's, that's, that's where they come in. Okay, And terrific. also the guarantee, probably. Oh. Listen, Mason, the thing about ship station is it can import your online orders from anywhere you sell from. I'm talking eBay, Amazon, even your own web store. 
whatever you want, they can bloody do it. And it's really easy to print shipping labels from all the major couriers from ShipStation, Royal Mail, Hermes, Amazon, Fulfillment. Fulfillment. (laughs) Fulfillment, it is. It's Fulfillment. (laughs) Mm -hmm. DHL, FedEx, UPS. It's as easy as you can possibly imagine, if not easier. Fulfillment is what you'll feel. That's right, exactly. In your in your heart and soul, once you get ShipStation. So or use ShipStation, however ShipStation works. <laughs> With ShipStation, you'll get orders out fast and keep customers happy. And as you know, happy customers mean more... Crappy customers. Oh. No, no, more yeah. orders. Oh, terrific. Because they're happy. Yeah, nice. They're not crappy, they're happy, mm-hmm, Mason. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's good for business. So here we Sorry, go. it's just rhyming things. That's you you rhyming are, things. You got carried away. Mm-hmm. You can actually try ShipStation for free for 30 days, plus get a special bonus when you use the promotion code PLANET. So to take advantage of this incredible offer, just visit ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in PLANET. That's ShipStation.com, then enter promo code PLANET. ShipStation.com, get ship. Done. Yeah. And that's the guarantee, probably. It's time for another ad, Mason. Did you think there was only one ad? No. Okay, you know what it's time for. What's it time for? 30 minutes of silence. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> we said you, you, you thought we wouldn't do it, but we're going to do it. <laughs> Surprise, everybody. We're going to skip the rest of the segments, and it's just the end. <laughs> Now let's do a superhero show. Yeah, let's do it's it. It's been a long time. Mm-hmm. Long time between I know drinks. a lot of people probably know the rules, but you want to quickly recap. Okay, here's the deal. People want to know who is the best out of two given protagonists. Yes. What we, what we do is you imagine, use yeah. your imagination. I will. You use your imagination and you imagine... It's, we're, we're all with the house of ideas here, you know? I understand. We're imagineers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, you imagine that... The two protagonists appear at opposite se- opposite, opposite ends mm-hmm. of a regulation size American football field. How big is that? We, we don't, don't know. know. I was hoping to use Marvel Stadium at this point. Okay. Because in Australia, in Melbourne, oh, yeah. we have Marvel Stadium. Is it now called Marvel Stadium or Not, is that next year? It is te- technically it is, mm. but they haven't changed any of the signage. Oh, right. So I feel it'd be inappropriate. Well, we just had footy finals fever, Mason. Let uh-huh. me tell you that much. Yep. And so I think next this time next year, it'll be well on the way. Yeah, good, yeah. good, good. Anyway, the two people appear at opposite sides of a standard size American football field. Mm-hmm. However large that is, yep. they immediately decide that the other person is a threat mm-hmm. and then they have to seek to eliminate that person by whatever means that character would do. Yes. So maybe if, if a character is inclined to kill other pe- uh, kill people, then they will go in for the kill. Mm-hmm. If it's a character like Batman who does not kill... They will attempt to to subdue, depending on the version of Batman. Depending on the version of Batman, <laughs> sure, Batman I know. I get, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, right, absolutely. Right. They have the standard equipment. Yep. That they would normally be carrying with them, unless specified otherwise. Uh huh. And they can call in something that they could normally call in. Yeah. Like a like like Ghost Rider's motorcycle yep. or like an airstrike, Doctor Who's TARDIS or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure, uh-huh. absolutely. Uh-huh. Also, we're going to be. Uh, sp- uh, putting in a smattering of ultimatums throughout as well. Okay, great. Just Terrific. what if scenarios yep. that don't relate necessarily. Now, if you've never heard this before, be aware that our decision of the winner mm-hmm. of each matchup is final. Yep. But also, we don't care. <laughs> so if you think that our decision is wrong, you are wrong. Yep. But we also don't care. We don't care. <laughs> so don't email it because we don't care. Fine. You're you you're correct. You're not. Yeah. Just to be clear. <laughs> But take some comfort in the fact that you believe you're correct, <laughs> even though you're not. But also, don't email, email in because we don't care. <laughs> these We're are, not interested. Yeah, these are taken from the hashtag SH Showdown on Twitter, uh, the Weekly Planet Reddit thread, the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates, and the Weekly Planet uh, Gmail. Mm. So here we bloody go. Do you want to kick it off or do you want me to kick it off? Mm, you can kick it off. I think this is a great one to start with. This is from I'm Not David Bowie, 00, zero Iron Man. Wait a minute. Denial first sign that probably is David Bowie. This is going to be incredible. Okay. This is going to be a life changing first superhero showdown, I feel. So it's going to be filled with magic. <laughs> it's going to be great. This is, Everybody's going to remember where they were when they heard this. You better believe it. This is Iron Man, presumably yes. movie version, yep. uh, versus Killer Optimus Prime from Transformers 4. Remember when he went evil for four and a half minutes? Sort of. Yeah. Okay. Now, or we should also say that. Uh, Generally speaking, it's the character in the prime of their life. Yes. Uh, where do you feel Iron... What, where was Iron Man in the prime of his life? Is it Infinity War? It's got to be Infinity War, right? Okay, right, okay. Because that suit... I mean, it might not be a match for Thanos, yep. but it's better than all the suits kind of leaning up. You uh-huh. can get in and out of it. It can form different <laughs> weapons. <laughs> That's the and key. Gun- yeah. It can form different weapons and guns. It can go into space. It can uh-huh. shoot lasers. It can do all sorts of things. Yep. As opposed to like... 
his first suit, Wait, which, which was just, a pile of garbage. He just get jammed into it. <laughs> yeah, all the pile of garbage. I meant the first red one. Right, huh? Right. Or even uh-huh. like Iron Man 3, if he got hit, it would fall off him. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I think it's probably that one. I think you're, look, I think not, not to get, this isn't a debate about Iron Man suits. Okay. But I feel like it may not be his toughest suit. Like, because right. it's still a prototype. Okay, sure. But, all right, let's say, let's say it's the Infinity War suit. Well, it might also be, yeah, you might be right, because that was just a suit he had on him yep. when everything happened. Yes. That's kind of his, like, the suitcase suit. It's yeah. the, what's the nearest suit that I have? Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, it's on me right now. Yeah. Okay, that'll do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, okay. Yeah. Now, what was, what was, what is, uh, what was Optimus Prime's deal when he became evil? He was evil? Yep. He had a sword. But I feel like... All his tricks and abilities don't really differ from any other version of that character, as far as yeah, I can that's tell. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Except for the one where he had wings for 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. In two. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I like this showdown because I don't know whether... Do you think Optimus Prime could even get a hand on Iron Man? You know what? I think potentially because Iron Man would, would stand around to crow probably for a bit. <laughs> yeah, sure. And I think he'd be like, I could take a hit from this guy. Yeah. I think I think he would be surprised how fast Optimus Prime is. Yeah, right. I think he would underestimate that, mm. and and Optimus Prime potentially could grab at him. Would Optimus Prime appear as a truck on the other end? Well, so here's would it the be thing: like, is this a truck? Because Am it's, I fighting a truck? Because it's it's the movie version of Optimus Prime. He'll never transform. <laughs> so it's whatever version he is in initially. He stopped transforming in Transformers Two, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So. Look, I think it has to be in him in robot form. Yeah. Because if he's a truck, it's just Iron Man fighting a truck. <laughs> which He would thinks be... it's a truck, but then it's not a truck. Oh, right. That's what I'm saying. But no, he wouldn't appear... If he's appearing as Optimus Prime, he's, yep. he's the robot. I'll concede that. Uh-huh. I think also that, that sword from memory of that terrible movie, which I barely remember, uh-huh. when he goes to hit Bumblebee... Yes. Oh, sorry, Killer Optimus Prime is from Transformers 4 is not evil Optimus Prime. Kill Optimus Prime is he's when just he's the like, one he screams, I'll, I'll kill, kill everyone. I'll kill yeah, everyone. So yeah, okay, I'm, I'm a bit mixed up. Okay, there. right. Now, okay, well, I'm, then I'm very familiar with this version. Okay, cool. Because it's the one from Age of Extinction, right? Yes. Okay, right. Uh-huh. So I remember, though, in Transformers 5, his sword, he goes to stab Bumblebee in the face and it deflects off his face shield. Do you think Optimus Prime's sword could penetrate Iron Man's suit? Nano yes. suit? Yeah? Because it's none of his suits are that tough. Yeah. I think, I think Optimus Prime's advantage is he is. He can operate through almost like he's been stabbed through the chest. Yeah, he died thousands of times. <laughs> he can come back from the dead. Yeah, he never transforms, which is a waste of energy, <laughs> as we know. But Iron Man suits are—they're quite—they're—they're they're like they're like origami at this point. I feel. But also, I think that suit in particular, yep. as opposed to a lot of the suits in Iron Man Three, where Guy Pierce is just pulling them off him uh-huh. like they're tissue paper. I think the only reason that suit starts to fall apart is he keeps using all the weaponry to stop Thanos. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. I think if he kept all the nanotechnology on him, yep. I'm not sure that it could be pierced. Like okay. he could make a shield strong enough to stop Optimus Prime. Right. Okay. Yeah. But uh, that being said, like I think even before, even before. Uh, you know, he employs all that weaponry. I believe Thanos like rips his helmet off. Yes, so that's I think true, it is. Right? It's, yeah. it's not impregnable, right? Mm. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. And would you say Optimus Prime has comparable strength to Thanos? Uh, I think Thanos is stronger. Yeah. Uh huh. But I still think he'd have enough strength to do that. I think so too. Because he could, he can tear the head off another Transformer. That's true. And often his friends, because he does it all the time. <laughs> yeah, I I think Transformers aren't made of regular metal. They're made, of transformium, They're made of transformium, obviously. Transformium. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's a it's a supercharged metal that he can still yep. tear apart uh-huh. with his hands. Yep. Yeah. Do you think that Iron Man would go? See, here's here's the thing. I think probably Iron Man could kill Optimus Prime quite easily, mm. especially with that that Infinity War, War suit has the the big the big old red lasers. Yeah. Remember the big old red lasers from Iron Man 2? He does the big spin. Yeah. And he cuts them all in half. I reckon he could very easily cut Optimus Prime in half with one of those. Yeah. Um, but would he want to kill Optimus Prime or would he want to subdue Optimus Prime so he can steal all the technology for himself? I think he could steal it off his corpse. <laughs> okay. I don't think he'd Then care. he's going for the kill? Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I think what I think potentially he might cut him in half with those lasers, yeah, and then assuming that Optimus Prime is dead, mm. go in to examine him, yeah. Optimus Prime rips his head off. <laughs> <laughs> but Optimus Prime's weak point, it would seem, from the one time we've seen him die, was stabbed through the chest. Yes. Do you think 
Iron Man could could send a swarm of nanobots yes. to just fly straight through him. Yeah, and kill absolutely. Him. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does Optimus Prime ever fight, ever pretend to be dead and then he's not? I don't think like, so. Like, he ever lie down and then he's like, I'm not dead. I don't think so, no, because he's too full of honor. He's so much honor. Yeah. Or is he? Who knows in this version? No, see, that's, yeah, I don't know. I think this one is filled with rage more than honor. I think hey, this version of Optimus Prime would kill Iron Man if he could. Yeah, well, he's killer. He's yeah, killer he's Optimus ki- Prime, Optimus as we've Prime. established. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And, I, and I also think that Tony Stark would kill him because he's a robot from space. Tony Stark has also dealt with robots before. He's not really a fan. <laughs> no. And he has no problem killing yep. a lot of them. Yeah. But I still think Tony Stark has the ingenuity and the thinking on his feet to, to, to concoct a scenario with that suit, which can pretty much do anything... Yeah. against a guy who doesn't turn into a truck and is just wildly <laughs> swinging a sword. He would be wildly swinging a sword or he'd be screaming, I'll kill... You know how when, whenever he, whenever the, any of these Transformers get mad, they just like spin in a circle and they just fire their gun <laughs> yeah. randomly? That's not hitting anything. No. It's not. It's certainly not hitting a man-sized object like moving at the speed of sound, is yeah, it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I think it's Tony Stark. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I think given that they're bo- they both perceive the other one as a threat mm-hmm. I- immediately, Yeah. I think... He would just find a weak point mm. and cut him in half with, yeah. the, with the big lasers. Absolutely. Mm. All right. And that's the tooth. That is the tooth. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, let's see. Okay. This is from William Willis. Mm-hmm. Nick Fury versus Snake Plissken. Well, Because they both off. have... Yeah, eye patch. <laughs> it is an eye patch yeah. off. Yeah. Now, just to clarify... Um, and George Rios has suggested uh, make him shoot free throws. <laughs> so he determines the winner <laughs> that way. Because it's all about a depth perception issue, It is, right? yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, do either of the eye patches do anything? Not the movie version, yeah. no. For, even for Snake Plissken? No, it's just an eye it's patch. Not, did you ever see what's under it? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I certainly haven't. I've turned away. Yeah. Anytime it potentially was revealed in the movie, I would turn away because I, I do not want to ruin the magic. Does yeah. Nick, Nick Fury feels like the kind of guy that has a lot of tricks up his sleeve. See, that's the thing. And I a lot of backup. True. Yeah, and even that car that he's got just looks like a regular car, uh, but it's, it's got, got a machine- gun in the roof. <laughs> what? Again, I think we've discussed this before. What's that gun for? For shooting people next to you in the car. Yeah, <laughs> good point. What do you think it was wrong? Because it's in the the cut because the, the wind the windows are bulletproof, but the gun's inside the car. Yeah. So it's for shooting people who've betrayed you. But you but if, you want to really you want to really machine gun them. But I'd imagine the windows roll down. They all roll, roll down. Like the front ones roll yeah, down. Right, it okay. all rolls down. Okay. That's fine. not a bad question. I no, don't disagree yeah, with agreed, you. Agreed. Yeah. Uh huh. Do you think he'd call anybody in? You know how he's calling Captain Marvel. No, I don't think he can. I, think I don't think there's enough time. Yeah, I mean, where I is she know. now? Yeah, I agree. I agree. She's with you. still. Yeah. Not there. It's been yep. months. It's been years. Yeah. But no, he's got... Well, I mean, movie... What have we seen movie Nick Fury actually, like, employ weapons-wise? He doesn't seem a, a like he's that... launcher. Yeah, but, like, what's on him? Because the... the a handgun? Com- the comic book versions of Nick Fury have all sorts of weird stuff. It's all... And he could be a robot. Exactly. He's almost <laughs> certainly a robot. But he's got, like, holographic things, and he's got yeah. jet boots, and he's got all sorts of stuff. But... Movie Nick Fury's more of just a generic espionage guy. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Have we ever seen him in a proper fist fight? Oh, he's got that laser cutter. He does have that laser cutter. To cut through the the bottom of his car. So he might have more stuff on him than we know. Yeah. But we don't know what any of that is. We don't know how many beepers he has. Yeah. He could set them up in strategic locations and set them off. (laughs) And Pliskin would be like, what's that? What is that? What's Pliskin got? Guns. He's got a gun. Yeah. And a virus? And the co- and he's got a common cold that he thinks is a killer virus. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, he's just got a gun. I guess this is just this is just a gun battle, I feel. Fury's got... No, Pliskin's got youth on his side. Yes, I'm like assuming we're, going, we're not going escape from uh, LA. LA, we're going yeah. escape from New York. New York, Pliskin, of course. Assume, yeah. Yes. Uh, we know Pliskin can surf. That's <laughs> <laughs> true, yes. By that time he surfed away with Peter uh-huh. Fonda. Yep. Yeah. I, hand-to-hand... I'd probably give it to Pliskin. I also would, yeah. Because I don't... I've never seen... I, I, don't, I don't doubt that Fury could do it, but yeah. I haven't seen him do it, so I can't give it That's to him. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. I mm. think I think that Pliskin is a remorseless killer, mm. and he's done it constantly and will again, but like we've never even seen Fury in a fist fight in, in the movie. Yeah. In the movies, at least. I, would, I mean, he's definitely scrappy. He's definitely resourceful. Yeah. He's good at shooting the wrong fighter plane with a rocket launcher, but there's no fighter planes in this field, is there? Is that the wrong rocket... Like the plane, or does he just shoot? Is there two launching? And he... I don't know. Yeah, we never <laughs> we find out, we do never we? Find out. Where's the Marvel one shot about about the two guys and their best friends or their brothers? <laughs> and they're like, "Well, time to 
Do what we do. Time, time to nuke the, the city or whatever. What happened to that guy also? Yeah. Like, he, he was just doing his job. He was just doing his job. He's going to yeah. nuke New York. Yeah. Nuke New York. Say that a hundred times, Mason. Go. I will not. Okay. All right. Um, But does it get down to a fist fight? No. I think it's a I shootout. Think, I think... But I th- also think Fury's a way better shot. I think this could end in one bullet. Yeah. yeah. And Pliskin's not bulletproof, but Pliskin has a hologram of himself. Isn't that in Escape from LA? I don't know. I think it's from Escape from LA. But he does LA. have it. <laughs> it's true. But, but here's the thing, though. How's he going to employ that? He's just going to throw... He throws it on <laughs> yeah, the ground yeah. and a hologram comes up. I guess he could wait till Fury turns his head. But he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. That's yeah. true, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think, yeah, Fury would probably just shoot him. Mm. Also, I don't, and I don't know this, I think Fury's clothes are probably bulletproof. They're almost certainly bulletproof. Yeah. I was just going to say that, yeah. But we don't know that, so yeah. I, I shouldn't really assume that. Yeah. But I still think Fury's a better shot. If we had access to one of those, like, Dawling Kindersley, it's a look at the Marvel Universe, you know those big hard covers? Yeah, yeah. That, that points out all the stuff on there. Mm. If, it'd probably say Bulletproof Suit. I'm going to say it is Bulletproof. All right, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, then it's Fury. It's Fury for sure, yeah. And probably at basketball as well. Yeah, again, he's adept at turning his head. That's so right. So it's fine. We know that. Uh, this one isn't a, uh, a versus. This Ooh. is a scenario. This is from Placito on the Reddit. Cyborg versus a very stubborn man. So the, <laughs> the idea is here... Uh, so if anybody remembers, there's a very famous, uh, cuts, very famous. There was a cut. <laughs> it's famous to us. <laughs> it's famous to us. Line and scene, a uh, small moment from the Justice League film where a man is, a uh, Superman looks like he throws a cop car at a cop and Cyborg stops it. And then very calmly and casually, and some would say boringly says to the man, you should probably move. <laughs> yep. Uh, so that guy or a guy like that. Yeah. Uh, the battle consists of Cyborg repeatedly suggesting that the man move. However, if the man is very the, the man is very comfortable where he is at that particular time, right? Yeah. Would Cyborg just move him? No. So he'd he'd have to convince him. Well, there's no there's no inherent danger in this scenario, is there? No. So it'd be it'd be rude of him to say you should well you should probably move. Are you giving it to the guy who won't move? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not even a, it's not even a competition. Can you imagine Cyborg presenting a compelling argument? But what is the argument? I, d- I don't think he could. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I don't yeah. think there's no... I mean, if there's no incoming danger... This guy is comfortable. It's true, yeah. It doesn't even say whether this man is in a scenario where you'd be like, mate, you're holding up traffic. Maybe they're both jogging around the outside of the football field. <laughs> right, okay. And Cyborg is faster because he's a cyborg. He's got jets. I mean, why he, Why would he would need to exercise because he's a cyborg? But let's say he is. Yeah. But that's the point, right? He'd be like, hey man, you should probably move. Yeah. And the guy would be like, no, I'm just I'm just doing my thing. And the I, don't guy would be the, like, I don't think the guy would be jogging. I think he'd be sitting on the track. Huh. Because he's not moving. And that's he's like, you true, should probably yeah. move. And yeah, he's yeah. like, well, I don't really yeah, want to. Yeah, that's true. No, I think the, the only compelling argument would be, you're in my way of jogging. And the guy yeah. would be like, but go. you don't need to jog. You're a cyborg. <laughs> I mean... Also, go around. Just go around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go over me. You can fly. You can fly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Put your little weird little half a mask on and go and fly. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm giving it to the guy who will not move. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, this is from Jason DeLange. Uh, okay. Draco, the dragon voiced by Sean Connery. Okay. Uh, versus Smaug, voiced by Benedict Cumberbatch. Mm. That dragon is vicious. That hobbit dragon. Yeah, Smaug. Yeah, like yeah. Like a dead set killer. Yeah. The Draco version, mm-hmm. first of all, much smaller. Yeah, I agree, yeah. Maybe four elephants big, maybe. That's true, yeah. Friends with Dennis Quaid, an advantage, sure. <laughs> but Dennis Quaid only has a sword. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh... But what is... And Dennis I, Quaid isn't there. That's true. <laughs> you can't call on your friend Dennis Quaid because you're not magical and he's not magical. It's just the two of you, all right? I mean, he is magical. The drag is magical. But he's not some of your friends kind of magical. magical. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I agree. Um, well, what do they have on the field? Mm. I imagine they're both fireproof? Yeah. They've got well, so that so that's out. To stab the Dragonheart Dragon, the Sean Connery one, yep. he has to pull back his scales on his chest to expose his heart. Yes. Smaug yep. already has an exposed heart. That's true. But yes. the only way you can kill Smaug is with a special eye and arrow or whatever it is in that right. movie. In the okay, books. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine that, that dragon does not have that on him. No. Mm. Alright, slight alteration. All the goalposts have made of that. Okay. That thing that you've just said. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's just them trying to stab each other in the heart. With goalposts, yes. Also, if you get... Dra- his name's Draco. Yes. Sean Connery Dragon's Draco's heart or a piece of his heart, you live as long as the dragon. 
Oh. Does that change anything? Why do I know so much about yeah, Dragon? Yeah, not really. <laughs> so, I'm glad you could pull the name of the movie because I had no idea also. Well, why, why would Smaug want that? Well, to live longer, but then... It, he's I, also, he's immortal, surely. I, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. yeah. They're both talkers. They are both talkers, yeah, that's true. They're both British or Scottish. Uh-huh. Do, you think kin- do you think dragons have a certain kinship? I, uh, so. I know they but do. Also, the, Smaug's a real prick. Yeah, they do in the dra- they do in the Dragonheart universe. Yeah, right. Uh, also, he's the Sean Connery one is the last one. That's true. Smaug, as far I don't know whether he's the last one, mm-hmm. but he should be. But he, <laughs> yeah. he's the worst. <laughs> as much as I'd like it to be Sean Connery, yeah. What's a dragon doing with gold? What, what are, are they buying? No, no, no. It's just, no, it's like a bowbird. Yeah. But I think I'd have to give it to Smell because he's just, he's, he's insane. He's like the size of a town, mm. you know? He's huge. Yeah. And yeah. he is insane. Yeah. As well. But is, is, could, could Draco get in, like, in his circle real quick? You know what I mean? I don't think so. I think Smell is quicker. Also, Smell seems to have. He's more lizard like. Yep. I think he's more kind of, uh, and like could wrap around a dragon. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, way yeah, that. Yeah. Draco's more kind of like a dog. He is, well, that's to, true, yeah. Yeah, if I had to. Yeah. And a lizard always beats a dog if they're the same size. Rules are rules. That's the rule of the jungle, isn't Komodo it? Komodo dragon versus a dog, a, yep. a Doberman. Yep. That Komodo dragon. Komodo dragon every time. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah, that's true. Uh, here we go. This is from Cyber Steam. Superman wearing a kryptonite ring that he can't take off versus Batman after his spine was broken by Bane. Uh, comic book version, I assume. I would have. Yes, I'd say both of these. Now, how effective is Superman when he's? Depends on the version. (laughs) That if he's got a kryptonite ring. No, I think maybe this is the movies. Okay. So this is then kryptonite's fine. (laughs) He could do. Oh, does it slowly weaken him? Yeah, he loses. Yeah, he has no powers. But but he does in the movies. He picks up the spear and he can still fly. There's a bit where he's getting shot by a machine that a kryptonite machine that shoots. Uh The home planet energy. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. Into Earth, and he just flies through it or whatever. That's probably true. Yeah. I feel like it's a gradual loss yeah, right. of powers. But what about in Batman v Superman, where he just takes one sniff of it and he's like, oh, I got no powers? Oh, yeah. See, that's where I was assuming it was. But going. that's ingesting as opposed yeah, right. to having it on your person. Oh, he tries to bite it off and he swallows it. <laughs> Well, that's dumb. Yeah, we're yeah. dummy. But they're dumb. They're dumb asses in these <laughs> movies, right? It. it would break his teeth and he'd, and he'd yeah. swallow it. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, let's say he's got. Let's say he's got the kryptonite ring. He's being slowly weakened. Yeah. And it's okay. Let's say comic book versions then. Okay. Okay. Well, Batman would have some something in place, I'd imagine, to stop Superman. But well, he well, he has the ring on him. Yes. As we've seen from well, Hush. It, ultimately, it's the kryptonite ring. <laughs> yeah. Is this a second kryptonite ring? Because I, I feel there's only one kryptonite. Yeah, ring. and you don't need two. No. Yeah, but I think it's Batman. Because, really? Because it's over already. I feel like the fight's already over. You just have he just has to crawl around and wait for Superman to die Pretty from radiation. He just has to poison. stay away from him. Right, uh-huh. But would Superman be weakened enough from the get-go that Batman could stay out of his I think no, I think cuz you know whenever like Lex Luthor breaks out the kryptonite ring. Yeah. It's always you know, Superman will try and like a make a make a grab at him, yeah, and then Lex Luthor will just like swat him away because mm. he's so weak at this point. I think it'd be like that. I think he's got maybe like a he's got maybe a thirty second window, and then he's then yeah. he's then he's going down. He's okay. at least powerless. Yeah, right. Okay. So, but also Batman is paraplegic. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah, paraplegic. Yeah. Yeah, he can't. Yeah. But I think he's got amazing upper body strength. That's probably does true. Does Bane break his back and then dump him there? I guess so. <laughs> He what is, throws him down a well? No, I mean because he's in the football field. Oh, he's field. in the football field, right. Uh, no, they tele- teleport. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, fair enough. Wow, just at that point. Yeah, the ultimate <laughs> dignity in a yeah. way. But yeah. you'd, still feel, you'd feel pretty good because you'd be like, well, I lost that fight, but I'm winning this one. It's true. Yeah, so it's be a, re- be a real ego booster for him. I think it's know? Batman because I think the fight's already done. Yeah, I think, again, it, because it's... They they know they have to subdue the other one. Yeah. And Batman's got so much. Like even in what I can only assume is a lot of pain, he'd have a he'd still have a lot of gadgets on him. Yeah. Like he'd have a whole bunch. He got he, like he could clock him with a batarang and be out. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. He I think he would have to know that the 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 batarang. He'd have to know that the kryptonite ring has made him weak. Yeah. He could probably tell. I'm sure he could tell. Yeah. yeah. Normally, normally, his skin might turn a certain shade, or he's like. Ugh. Yeah, uh-huh. or whatever. Yeah, I think it's mm. Batman. What else you got, Mason? Let's see. Let us see. 
Okay, this is from Harry Dobbs. All right. The Avengers from the movie The Avengers okay. versus Justice League from the movie Justice League. No no twists? No twists. Uh, well, the, the, the Justice League have Superman. I was going to say, so, yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's no... Uh, I think even if they... Even, even if you just took... If you only had Superman or only Wonder Woman or only Aquaman... Yep. Mm-hmm. I think that's enough. Or even only The Flash. Any of them, except for Batman could beat all of the Avengers at once. Really? Okay. Yes. Even the Flash? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, because the Avengers have always been more brawlers than it's been. Yeah. It's more, they're, more, they're more street level than they are Justice League, who yeah. are all like godlike for the most part. I get the sense of the Avengers from the movies that they're more like a SWAT team yeah, right. than uh-huh. gods. Yo, absolutely, but yeah. But everybody on the Justice League, except for Batman, is a god. That's true, really. yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. And Superman is stronger than the Hulk, so... Yes, that's right, yeah. Mm. Oh, we don't, we don't want to get into that, though. That video that I've got on my channel from, like, four years ago... Oh, that's still getting, that, still getting some still comments. Gets, Terrific. It still gets comments. Yeah. Uh, but I think the movie version of Superman is probably stronger than the movie version of the Hulk. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, is there any scenario where, say, Captain Captain America could beat Wonder Woman? Oh, beat, not uh, not just you know, not survive, not survive. Ah, uh, well, he's strong enough to uh, hold back Thanos for a second. A second, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he can fight Ultron for a little bit. Yeah, that's a good question. Like, I I feel like could say Captain America knock out Wonder Woman. I feel maybe he could. Maybe, yeah. Like she's not, and I I also guess it depends on how how more how much how more how much more powerful she is than a regular Amazonian because mm. regular Amazonian is not bulletproof. She is bulletproof, or she's because she has still has to use her bracelets to deflect bullets. But if she doesn't, I don't know if she is bulletproof. I don't. Yeah. Know, I think they can kind of. Ping off her, but she will. She prefers to use a bracelet yeah. or a shield. Yeah. Look, I mean, solely as a Captain America versus Wonder Woman, mm. if he could hold her off for like a, long enough to like clock her with his shield, I mm. think he could knock her out. Maybe, maybe. Or but if, if he hit her, if if she hit him hard enough, his head would explode. So you just have to get past the shield. Yeah, basically, uh-huh. that's that's what he'd have yeah, going yeah. for him. Yeah. Uh-huh. But then again, maybe maybe Spider Man on a good day could trip the Flash. Right, but he's not on the team at this point. Which Avengers? This is Avengers One. Ah, yeah, right. Uh-huh. This isn't this isn't whatever roster we're, we're we're putting together. Do you think the Hulk could snatch the Flash out of the Speed Force? Yes. Mm? Yeah. So you think the Hulk could probably kill this version of the Flash? Because he's oh, not absolutely. very good, is he? No. Yeah. He's untrained and he's bloody tripping over his feet. He's tripping over Can't his feet. Can't run for shit. Yeah, exactly. He's got a terrible running style. Yeah. In fact, I think Captain America could pro- probably take him, if I'm honest with you. What, what I think, do you think most that? of them could, actually. Could take the Flash. I think Black Widow could take the Flash. I think Hawkeye could take the Flash. I think the Flash would stop long enough for, for any of them to take him. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I think the Flash is out, at yeah, least. Okay. Yeah. What about Cyborg? Do you think Tony Stark could out... Uh, technology Cyborg? Yeah. Uh, this is Avengers Tony Stark as well. Yeah. What suits he got? He's got the Mark Seven. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty. It's not bad. Yeah. Comes in that little torpedo container thing. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Those those two would be the ones who would go to each other, wouldn't they? I think fight? so. Yeah. yeah. Or Batman versus Cap. Batman versus Iron Man. Maybe. I'd like it to be like Batman Captain America. Would probably yeah. be the way. Yeah. Look, I, look. It's good. Look, it's look. It's fun to spin our wheels, but I think the event. I think the Justice League do take this solely because they've got Superman. Yeah. Which is why I'm objecting to Captain Marvel being the most powerful being in the universe. Because it's not, not even there, mate. I know, but it's not fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. If there's one guy who can beat it, everybody, he could even, you could even turn the rest of the Justice League against Superman in this scenario and have every member of the Avengers versus every member and Justice League versus Superman and he'd still beat them all. Yeah, so, you're right. If they had no Loki's fun. staff and they're just slowly yeah, changing right? everybody. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so could Iron Man out Cyborg Cyborg? I Probably think, not. I no, I, th- I think he could defeat him, but if Cyborg got close enough, he would just reprogram all of Iron Man's suit to, yeah. to fall off him embarrassingly. 
And he'd be wearing his little heart underwear. Yeah, he'd be a little heart underwear, yeah. Great. Yeah, terrific. You know what? I think also the Justice League winning this fight speaks to the power of that film and how good those characters Disagree. are. Disagree. I think you've you've taken absolutely the wrong message from this because it's a bad movie. We both had a fun time with no, it. We didn't, though. And I didn't have any fun. established that they are the better team than we the Avengers. We did not do that. It's not... <laughs> no. That's what happened here, everybody. No. Powers-wise, certainly not quality-wise. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's one. It's a scenario. Dakota... Cootie Fanny. says, oh. I wish. This is still good. Dakota Cootie's still good, Mason. I agree. Uh, Xenomorph Queen, with a few Z- Xenomorphs, get on the free New Hope Death Star. So Grand Moff Tarkin and Darth Vader is, are there, but yep. no Emperor. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. I think the only scenario where this doesn't go to the aliens is that Darth Vader would be not there because they would just run amok in the Death Star. Yes, it's true. It would be a bloodbath. The people employed on the Death Star are very bad at their jobs. <laughs> and there's plenty of plate there's plenty of trash compactors mm. to kind of like to stab all the alien stew in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just gantries you can like and pits you can just make a nest yeah. in. There'd be whole floors that are like probably like haven't been made operational yet. Yeah. And they can just nest in there. For days, potentially. How many How many people... I'm going to Google how many people are on a Death Star. I think it's something like 10,000. Yeah, right. Uh, there's varying numbers because I once did a Kill Count video where... Oh, yes, right, right, It's right, about right, 10,000 right. from memory. Uh-huh. But also the numbers vary because I think some people have said like 100,000 upwards of a million, but I don't uh-huh. think it's... I don't think it is that many. Staff number on the crew of 265,000. Mm-hmm. Okay. As well as 50,000 gunners, 600,000 troops. Okay, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's yeah. no way this goes to the Empire, certainly. Yeah. But how do you think... So Darth Vader would presumably have to kill the alien queen. Before it got out of hand. Yeah. I think he might even just leave. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. think there's anybody on that... He didn't come back after <laughs> the end of Star Wars when he flew <laughs> off into space. He's just like, no, I'm just going to keep spinning, actually. Just going to keep spinning. Bye, everyone. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if there's anybody on that vessel, because it is uh-huh. a vessel, yep. that is competent enough to work out what's going on quickly enough to formulate a plan to stop it. Mm, also, agreed. these things, I don't know if Darth Vader's suit is acid proof. I know it's some kind of special blastoid steel or whatever, uh-huh. but I yep. don't know. I can, it can deflect a glancing blow from a lightsaber. But I think mm. if he had, if he cut one in half and it rained acid on him, I think he'd be yep. in trouble. See, here's the thing, though. Not a lot of him is real anymore. Yeah. So I don't think it would concern him that much. No, I, I agree. Yeah. But I think if it whittled down his parts, yeah. Then he. I reckon he's got spares. He definitely does. But I, I re- mean, I think he'd all. You know what? I don't. That's think something he'd... we've never seen. He's like he gets a damaged army, he just jettisons it, and he opens up like the boot of his car, and he's got another. <laughs> he's got another couple of arms in there. He pops the boot of the car yeah. or the Tie Fighter or whatever, and he's he's like, oh, I've only got left arms. Oh. I've, okay. used, I've used all my right arms. <laughs> now, now I've got two left arms. This is a nightmare. I actually don't think he'd leave. Yep. Because in the Darth Vader comic, which is currently running, mm-hmm. which is about this time period, a bit before, he's suicidal. He will run into scenarios where he's thoroughly unprepared, uh-huh. and he, but he's just, a, he's just brute force and strength. Yep. Uh-huh. If he's just throwing the force, and yep. just, he could probably... Walk to the alien queen. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's true because they also don't understand what's happening. They don't know what's going yeah. on. Like they couldn't. They can figure out if like all oh, these troops going this way or whatever. But I don't think they could be like, what's this invisible force yeah. emanating from me? Also, here's the thing though. Here's a question. Uh, let's say you cut off an alien limb mm. with a lightsaber. Yeah. What happens? It just kind of sprays. Maybe a bit it of doesn't blood. though. What do you mean? Well, oh, or does it seal? Does it cauterize oh, the limb? Yeah, right. Because if every time somebody's had their arm cut off in a in a bloody Star Wars movie, yeah. they, they just flail this dry stump around. You know <laughs> what I mean? True, yeah. All that, it's, it's, it seals the wound, I'm pretty sure. So That's, I reckon you could go through a lot of them. You're not wrong. Could he give some spare lightsabers to various people? He's I only got the he, one. I don't think he would. No, no I think he has more, uh-huh. but I don't think he would. Right. He's got a whole lot of Sith stuff that he kind of hangs yeah, on yeah. to. Uh-huh. But yeah, I don't think he'd... He'd probably taken a group of crack commandos with him yep. that he doesn't care for. Is there anybody else is there anybody else famous on the Death Star currently? This would be this is Death Star One. So pre star is there anybody in like the expanded universe who was on that Death Star then they got off before it blew up? 
And the expanded universe, I'm not really sure. Most of them are just generals and that's kind of what I moths thought, yeah. and whatever. Yeah, right. He does have a crew of inquisitors. Oh. So he might have that's in canon, so he might have one of them there, right. depending on the day. Uh-huh. But I don't think there's anybody else other than the Emperor on his side that would make any difference. Yeah, agree. That would help him at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think without him, yep. that place is fucked. But <laughs> with him, yep. I think he'd he'd turn the tide. Yeah, right. I think that would be over in a day if he wasn't there. Yeah, right. Yeah. Cause it, and also, I guess it depends on how long it takes to grow an alien. It's a few hours, right? Various sources, but yeah, it seems to be not that long. Yeah, right. Like maybe maybe 12 hours, maybe, but sometimes it seems to be less. Yeah. Like a lot less. But man, that's exactly... Those bringing a team of... St- they're not even... They're worse shots than the, than the Colonial Marines, so... And I, and I don't even know that a laser would even... Could it even kill an alien? How about this? Mm. Stun mode. Didn't think about stun mode, did you? I don't think I still. No, I wouldn't. I'm just I still, kidding. But even if it did, I don't. Yeah. What are you stunning them and then what? I don't know. Because you'd have to jettison them because you can't then. You stun... feed them to that thing in the garbage shoot. But you're mashing up uh, on a space station. Yep. You're mashing up creatures filled with acid. acid. Yep. So you kind of have to stun them and then jettison them. Yeah, that's true. And I don't think you'd mm. be able to do that at speed. That's that's, that's true. Yeah. Fast enough. Yeah. Yeah. So you think you think Darth Vader could kill the alien? Queen? I think he would walk it, it in. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. I, I don't think it would be any problem. Interesting. Because if you look at also on like Geonosis from Attack of the Clones, yeah, right. And even he's gone back as Darth Vader in the comics. There's a whole lot of alien bugs in that, and he's just tearing through them. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. What else you got? Uh, Keith Williams wants to know the Ghostbusters from 1984, mm-hmm. the original Ghostbusters one versus Force Ghost Yoda, Qui Gon, Obi Wan, and Anakin. Okay, so the only thing we know Force Ghosts can do yep. is summon lightning. They can do that. Okay. Who does that? Yoda in The Last Jedi. Does he? Yeah, he burns down a tree with it. Oh, I guess he does. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Good point. And they can also appear as So he doesn't different... shoot lightning. He calls it down from the sky, I guess. I, yeah, I think yep. so. Uh-huh. But also, I, d- I think that can also be interpreted as timing. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you know, Port- it's portentous, isn't yeah, it? But yeah, but I think, but I think he seemed he seemed to have summoned it, to have yep. the energy to summon it. Okay. Do you think force ghosts can be pulled into a? I like this one. Could yeah. be pulled into pretty good, the, right? The toaster. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah, I think so. If they're ghosts, mm. you're saying because maybe they're from a different spiritual spiritual realm, yeah. than than Ghostbusters ghosts. Yeah, I say no. They're just as gross as regular <laughs> Ghostbusters ghosts. Covered in goo. And- yeah, exactly. They, they go to the hotel and Yoda's just there at the food cart, just, <laughs> uh, 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 just, eating, just eating cakes and they're all falling out his ghost bus, you know? <laughs> but can you, can the Ghostbusters even see them? I don't know. Can they, can they be seen in the movies? I actually don't know. We don't know. Right. It's a, the only kind of hint that they can't be seen yep. is at the end of Return of the Jedi when he shows up, they all show up and they're like, Hey Luke, it's us, all your yeah, mates right. and your dad. Uh-huh. And Luke's looking at them and yeah. it appears as if no one else can see him. Well, here's the thing. The Ghostbusters have the PKE meter. Well, that's the other thing. So yeah. I imagine Egon would come in real close. Mm. Probably Egon or Ray. Egon's coming in hot. Yeah, they would come in hot. They'd, they'd have the PKE thing and I think they'd be able to get close to the... They'd get close to where the Force Ghosts are. Yeah. What they'd have to do, I think, is have to... You know, there's that chalk. You know, there's some chalk at the side of the... Sure, yeah. At the side of the bloody... The, the side of the bloody stadium. They'd have to do some flinging and make those ghosts visible, I guess. If that even Does that works. Work? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because also the Ghostbusters are terrible at... Ghostbusting. Ghostbusting, obviously, especially in Ghostbusters 1. But they're... Oh, no. You know what? The peak of their powers. Yeah. So I'd say this is at the end of Ghostbusters 1. Okay. So they're... they're at this point, they have moved from bold scientific inve- investigators to glorified roach hunters. Right. They're just blue collar, just Joes. Yep. Busting yep. ghosts every day. Uh, so I think they know what they're doing, mm-hmm. but uh, I think also the Force Ghost ghosts can disappear whenever they want right, and okay. reappear elsewhere, uh-huh, uh-huh. like go into a different realm. Right. I don't know if the Ghostbuster ghosts can do that. They seem to have to run through a wall <laughs> it's to it's escape. It's true. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I think for the purposes of this, we have to say that they're trapped. Okay. On the field. All right. Fair enough. Because otherwise, this is a very short fight. You don't isn't think it? Yoda's just hitting them with lightning? Would he though? Even uh, I don't know if he would. No, because I think because they well see that's the thing about uh, Jedi. Mm. They'd be able to tell that these guys are not bad guys, right? Yeah. But there's no way the Ghostbusters be able to tell that these aren't 
evil ghosts. Yeah, no, they they capture anybody. They capture it. They don't care. They just yeah. they just they capture him and study him. But at least there's there wouldn't be any deaths here. I don't think. No, because they just put him in that facility. Mm. They'd put him in the storage facility. And then they just eventually get out. <laughs> That's for true. For revenge. Yeah. For revenge, exactly. Yeah. Them and the Scoleri brothers. And the Scoleri brothers. <laughs> yeah, doesn't matter. They, were they the guys in the courtroom? Yeah, in the courtroom. We yeah, 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 I remember, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, what, what else? There's nothing else the Force Ghost can do, I don't think. No. Can they affect? Can they use the Force? We don't know. Yeah. I would don't. say probably. Yeah. But we don't know. Yeah. We're in, uh, in Legends, I think sometimes they can shoot lightning or whatever. Okay. I know that in. There was going to be a scene in the original Return of the Jedi where Obi Wan and Yoda's ghost help Luke fight the Emperor or something. Right. Okay. But that didn't end up happening. Okay. Yeah. Could they potentially? Could they move, say, a set of goalposts? Oh, onto them. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Could they? Could they? I'm I'm suggesting a scenario in which Ray and Egon go in mm-hmm. to to check out some some PKA readings. Sure. And then. The Force Ghosts clock Winston and and Bill Murray with the goalposts on the other side of the field because they're staying back. They're like, we're safe back here. We don't yeah, want to yeah. get into any of this. Yeah, we're the most working Joe of working Joes. Yes, yes. And they get clocked with the with the goalposts and they're down. Do you think the the two remaining could stop the Force Ghosts? No, because Ray's a terrible shot. Yep. Ah. Uh... Maybe they'd cross the streams and die. They <laughs> could cross the streams and die. Look, I think I think. Assuming they, I don't know. Assuming they can see each other, yeah. I think it's a very, it's a pretty short fight because it's just four streams of like proton pack lasers, mm. and then then the toaster comes out, and yeah. I think they're in. You know okay. what I mean? Okay. Yeah, I think it's the Ghostbusters on this one. I accept. Unless unless people out there have information to prove otherwise, which is fine, but we don't want to hear it. Do not send it in. I'd love to hear. Mason's response to I kind of would actually yeah I kind of if if there's some if you have this is the one exception if you have some definitive evidence that the for, that the the force ghost can do stuff none of this legend shit no but official canon yeah modern day stuff I'm including some video games if they're canon yep let let me know all right fair enough mm-hmm. what about this this is from monkey six four two eight five oh yes an average man mm-hmm. with a thousand years of prep time yep versus Batman. With none. Oh. Well, I guess the question, because it, it's an issue of standard. What's the standard equipment? For an average man. What's the standard equipment for an average man? With a thousand, <laughs> but a thousand years, years of, prep. of prep time. So this is a thousand years of prep time. He knows he's going to fight Batman. Apparently. Uh, well, On a football field. Oh, right. But uh, no, I, I think the question is, They've both arrived, yes. and the man has had a thousand years to prepare for a battle with Batman. Yes. So he could presumably have have learned karate for a thousand yeah, like years. Yeah, like martial arts. He could have gadgets. Like, he could have gadgets, He could yeah. have time travel. Yep. He could shoot lightning. He could have magic. Yep. Yeah. Also, it also no. here's the thing, though. If he's an average man, he's not a superhero. I, this is an average man in our universe, yes. I think. Okay, okay. So the question I feel is... Are you any better at karate after a thousand years than you are after, say, twenty years? You know what I mean? Probably not. No. Also, you're a, you're a, you're an average man. You're in the prime. You, you remain the prime in the prime of your life. Yes. So you're not going to get any older. So that's a bonus. Yeah. What's your preparation for fighting Batman, Batman in terms exactly. of knowledge? Well, are you reading Batman comics? Good question. Are you watching all the films? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What What's the most effective weapon that you would bring to telling him your mother's name is Martha? <laughs> Obviously, is number that's one. That's if you're fighting that version of Batman. Yeah, that's true. I guess if you don't know which version of Batman, you but you come... would for a thousand years, right? Yeah. Or would you? Or would you just be ready for all? I'm going to say that this is this is someone in our universe. Yeah. They don't know which Batman they're going to be fighting, mm-hmm. so they have to prepare for every eventuality. Do you think it's like when you open a test? Yep. And you're like, oh, thank God, you know all. I know all the questions I studied for this. Yep. So, so if Adam West Batman, you'd be like. Okay, this is best case scenario. Yeah, this, this is totally, the one exactly. that I want. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll ask him the best way to cross the road safely, and as he's going on about that, I'll stab him in the neck. <laughs> you know? Also, does the average man want to kill Batman? Yeah. I feel the average man would have to. Would have to. Because otherwise, yeah. what are you going to do? Yeah. But yeah, and also, I think it should be it's any version of regular Batman. So it's not like vampire Batman yep. or anything like that or communist Batman. Batman of the future or no, whatever. No, it's, it's a regular Batman, but any anyone from like the, the 1930s serial one to like Ben Affleck. Yeah, okay. Any, any of those ones. Comic book one, it's fine. Yeah. Um, I think comic book Batman 
could not be beaten by a man with a thousand years of experience. I kind of agree. Because yeah. if you look at, say, Rachel Ghul or Razal Ghul, yep. whatever you say, yes. he has that. He literally yep. has that. That's true. And he still can't do it. And he's got it. magic. And he's got magic. Yeah. And he can't do it. He knows Batman inside out. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, in, again, if you're the real world guy, what do you got? You got a gun. Mm-hmm. Batman's bulletproof for the most part. Yeah. Except Adam West Batman. Yeah. Which, again, can be very I mean, easily... you're crossing your fingers for that, but it's not a guarantee. That's true, yes. Yeah. Uh, you, what do you got? A rocket? You found a rocket launcher? He's probably prepared for that. He can. Su- I reckon Batman could dodge a rocket. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Also, that the the version the Ben Affleck one that cape is like fireproof, so yeah. even if it went off near him, he'd be fine. He'd exactly. be fine. Yeah. Um, I, could you defeat him psychologically? In what way? Um, I don't know. Something to do with his parents. You know how that goes. I don't think there's enough time on that field to set up a scenario where you can break his mind. Yeah. That's Maybe true. if you lured him t- into a weird maze yeah. with pictures of his parents and yeah, people yeah, yeah. that he's let down. Yeah. But you you can't have that on you. No, that's true. I mean, you could tell him about it, but he'd be like, no, I know. I, it torments me li- every literally day. every day. So. <laughs> it's just background noise at this point, really. <laughs> I should see a specialist about it, but I don't. I just spend millions of dollars on, on weird Batman vehicles and I punch people individually. Yeah. Anyway, which I'm going to do with yeah. you. And you're in a net now. Yeah, yeah. Right, exactly, yeah. I got you in a net. Could you get, you couldn't get Batman in a net? I don't, I don't think, think so. No. Not a net that he could cut himself out of. Yeah. Also, in what real world weapon net could actually hold Batman? Yeah, right. There's not a real world net gun that could stop no, Batman. that's true. Yeah, yeah, because he's got the blades. Mm. He's got the, he's got the blades. He's that's got what the I'm blades. And probably another knife on his belt. Probably another. Probably I, a boot knife. You know, the, I think the only way you could defeat him yep. is if you turned up with a nuclear weapon and just set it off. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. I mean, you'd go down. Yeah. But you'd win. But here's the thing: if you've been around for a thousand years, mm. it depends what your mindset has become after a thousand years. Because <laughs> if for, after a thousand years you're like. Um, just let this be over with. You just walk up to Batman and be like, can you please? And Batman would clock you and you'd go down and then you'd wake up in your normal office job again, I guess. But that's not what you're there for. But that's but exactly right. Mm. But it also depends on what happens afterwards, mm. you know? So I guess if you're like, well, now I'm going to live forever in jail, maybe you would set off the nuclear bomb. Yeah. Yeah. And, and no timer. Because if you put a timer on it, he'll stop definitely it. stop yeah, it. Yeah, he's got some sort of, he's got some sort of electronic... He's got an electromagnetic pulse or something. Yep. You, know, you know how those work. I know exactly how they you work. Know how that works. It generates an electric and it disrupts electrical signals. You know how yes. it works. Yeah. So I think it's possible, but I think whatever you do, it has to be implemented in less than a second yep. and it has to kill him immediately. Yes. And probably you, whether that be a bomb or a, even a smaller bomb. It doesn't <laughs> have to be a nuclear bomb. Yeah. It can yeah, be yeah. just be, I don't know, yep. a pretty big bomb. Hostages. <laughs> So you can take hostages with you. Well, you've got a thousand years to prepare. Okay. You can throw anything in. So like a, a wall of hostages in front of you? Yes. That he has to save? I don't know. Have they got neck bombs? Probably, yeah. Defuse? I guess. See, that's the thing. If you have a thousand years to prepare, you'd have to go, you'd have to cycle through every supervillain plan there is. Because mm. Hot- it's not like also Batman hasn't been defeated. That's but true. also if you're facing the optimum version of Batman, whatever scenario you throw at him, that you've read about or seen, yep. he's experienced that. Probably, So yeah. you've got to take that and also yeah. build on it so he's not expecting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. You know, I'd actually love to hear if people have a scenario that they could concoct to defeat Batman. And nothing too weird. Nothing too weird or gross, <laughs> all right? Keep it PG. This is an Adam West Batman we're often dealing with, all right? So keep it... Do it keep, for West. Do it for West. Keep it clean, all right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But it's probably Batman. Yeah, it's probably, still probably Batman. Okay, this one. This is from Jonathan Bartow. Mm-hmm. This one takes place outside of the the, uh, the the football field. Okay. So it's a one teleporter, mm-hmm. jumper rules, okay. versus one shapeshifter. They've never seen each other before. They have to hunt each other around the world. <sighs> Who comes out on top? Shapeshifter, jumper. Yeah. So, You'd, oh man, okay. Uh, shapeshifter. One Would the, the shapeshifter hunt jumper? They're both hunting each other. That's what I mean. Like, would the shapeshifter wait? Because the jumper can be literally anywhere. So, is it worth hunting jumper down? Because they can just leave immediately. Yeah. Or is it? Or is it better to lie and wait somewhere? 
Good question. We'll see. Mm. That's that is. Ex- it's almost like we're just debating this right now. Maybe it is. <laughs> it's almost like we're figuring out tactics in, as this happens. <laughs> um, well, that's the thing because you could. I guess you could. I guess we define what. Sh- so jumper rules. Yeah. You can teleport to anywhere you've seen. Yes. But that can include a photograph. But you had. You have to have been there. Yeah, right. You can't okay. go anywhere you haven't been. Uh, is that the rule? That's the rule. And okay. the photographs are just a reminder of it. Okay, right, cool. Yeah, and that's how it All works. All right, great. Mm. Can you take people with you? you can. Yes. Okay, great. Because mm. you can trap Samuel L. Jackson in a, cave in a cave on the side of a mountain. And then he respects and, you. But dies there. Then he dies. <laughs> okay, but what, what are our shapeshifter rules? Can they become anything or just any one? What does it say? Just as shapeshifter. I guess we've shapesh- got to define a shapeshifter. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. Shapeshifters to me generally can only take the shape of something they're vaguely shaped like. Okay, right. So yeah. well, let's say let's say let's say broad <sighs> anything of the same oh or is that too broad? I no, I think if you're human shaped, you can it, be hum, humans. Okay, right. I don't think you can be like a goat or a chair or okay, right. you know, a car. Okay, so let's let's just say then teleporter, jumper rules, shapeshifter, you can become any any person. Yeah. Uh, you can be Liv Tyler. You can be Liv Tyler if you want. You can be Steve Tyler. Oh, nice. Any of the Tylers. Wow. Yeah. Do you have to have been in a room with them, or can you just be like that? Look, I look, think you can look at a photo and okay, turn and, and be them. Yeah. Okay, right. So what? What would you? Let's say you're the shapeshifter. Yep. What would your strategy be? Oof. I would find out about them. Yeah. And I would turn into one of their close relatives. And then wait. Yeah, because so what? what how when the guy when a jumper jumps, mm. uh, how long does that take? Like it's just like poof, like yeah. that. Okay, yeah. so not even a second. Yeah, mm. right. Okay, yeah, because you'd kind of have to be. How would you find out? I mean, being a shapeshifter doesn't mean you're a great detective. That's and true. And being jumper doesn't mean that you can detect a shapeshifter. That's true. Yeah. You know, the only, you'd always be on guard because you would never know who. Is a shapeshifter. <laughs> yep. I guess you'd have a series. If it was me, I'd have a series of questions in place yep. that only you and that person would know. Right. And okay. You would run by them every time. But what if you're running them by a shapeshifter because they've already replaced your friend? Well, then they'd just attack you immediately, wouldn't they? Cause no, because they- because then you'd tell you then you'd jump her away. What you'd do mm. is you'd you'd replace some one of their friends instantly. Yeah. And then you'd be like, "Hey, you know what we should do? You should give me a series of questions." That, that only we would know the answer to. Yeah. And then you would wait five years. And then when <laughs> yes. you s- successfully answer the questions, then you'd stab them. You'd go there. away for a boy's trip. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Now that I've answered your questions, yeah. let's sink some tins up at the bloody, up at the bloody lake house. Yeah. And then, you'd stab and then I'll them. stab you. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, ignore that last part. <laughs> I, think that, I think you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think infiltrate would be smarter mm-hmm. than... Try and trick them on the spot and make a move immediately. Yeah, I think it's better to play the long game. Yeah, right. Yeah, if you, mean, if you want to win. I mean, both these people would go mad though. Yes, because you'd never you never know where they're gonna be. Exactly, and you'd also never know. Like you might again, if you can shapeshift, you can might be able to shapeshift to anybody. But maybe they've been following you for ages, mm. and they they could they could jump out. They could jump out at any point, and again stab you in the neck. I think if the shapeshifter knew who you were, no, sorry, if the jumper knew who you were. Yep. The victory is it's done. The victory like if they see you and they know who you are, they can jump behind you and break your neck immediately. Yeah, right. So I think it would be up to the shapeshifter to be to evade long enough to 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 lay in wait and yeah, set a right, trap. Right, uh-huh. Yeah. Also, I'm presuming they can just shapeshift for as long as they need to. Yeah, I'd like say they so. can hold a face for 5 years. Yeah, for, right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. yeah. This feels very strongly like it's going to end up with them both uh, marrying each other, not knowing, <laughs> and then being aware of it years later, be like, "Oh no, you're the guy I was supposed to kill." But we're in love. We're in love. Uh, uh. So yeah. mu- mutual suicide pact is what you're saying. Yes, so yeah. Wow. Oh uh, yeah. I like that one. It's a good one, right? Uh, should we do one more each? Yeah, let's do one more each. What do you got? Uh, let's see. Or I can do one. Yeah, please. Uh, this is a good one to end on for my side of things. Lagare Price says. Uh, Meso's avatar versus Mr. Sunday Movies avatar. Infinity so, Gauntlet. In, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that would be it. Yep. Yep. But do I want to wreck my beautiful arm? You know what I mean? I don't think wrecked. you'd... I don't, and I'm a lefty. But I don't think you'd use it all at once. You oh, just I guess use yeah, I'd any, use the, pa- you just I just shoot use the laser. I'd shoot the laser. I guess I'd just use... <laughs> Out of any of them. Yeah, I guess so. I'd use one of the, one of the lasers. Yeah. Yeah. No, it good. would be... It all would right, be let, me, let me find one. Okay. Uh, let's see... 
I can do one while, Please, you're, okay. while you're looking. Please, if you could. What about uh, Meatloaf says, the thing versus it. Right. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um. Okay. Would it be a football field scenario? I think it would be initially, but I think it would <laughs> spread extend. out. It would go. Yeah, right. Uh, how about will you see? Well, see, that's the thing because there's not a lot for either of them to work with. No. On a football field. We might have to broaden this out. Let's say it's at an Arctic research facility in the middle of a small New England town. Okay, that's fair. How's that sound? That's fair. It's good, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the cold is an advantage to the thing, and yep. he has that in this scenario. Yes. Could the could it psychologically terrify the thing? Because I don't think I don't it think could. it could. Yeah. I don't think it has any concept. I don't think it has any concept of fear. It has survival instincts. Yeah, but that is separate than fear. That's true. Because yeah. remember when the kids figured out that if you just don't be afraid of the clown, you could just beat him to death with a baseball bat. <laughs> yes, I do remember. I think that. the thing would just would know that would figure that out pretty early on. But what? But the thing is, the the it is also. F- See, that's the thing. Like, it's not the kids were also prepared prepared for an actual fight with the thing because the thing can. The, sorry, it, it rather. Yeah. Like, it can bite your arm off. Yes. But how much can it bite off of the thing? Like, if you bite off the thing's arm, yeah, the arm turns into spiders in your throat, and it's inside you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it can become anything. It would seem. Also, the way that it was defeated in the original telly movie and book, it's mm-hmm. a giant spider, alien spider. Yeah. And they just kind of stab it to death. <laughs> yes. And then one of the losers club tumbles through a parallel dimension with it and they have a mind battle and yep. defeats it. Do you think the thing is capable of that? Do you think the do you think the thing could thoroughly trounce it and then psychologically defeat it in a while spinning through another dimension? Not really, no. <laughs> But no. I don't also think that it could kill the thing. I think it could, though. But when does it... What can it do? I think this is a close race. Like, I mean, because it, it could light it on fire, I guess. Yeah. Because it knows the thing that you're afraid of and your weaknesses. I guess right. you don't really need to make it afraid. You just need to light it on fire. <laughs> it's true, yeah. All of it. And yeah. there's a lot of it. Yeah. And it's anybody. But also, do you think it would know... I think it would know... It wouldn't be fooled by a person pretending to be the thing, would it? Ah, uh, because it can kind of know your thoughts. It knows and... your thoughts. So if the thing doesn't have any thoughts, yeah, does the thing have thoughts? I believe so. Well, it can hold the conversation. It can replicate a person. Yeah, down right. To where other people who know that person don't know. I assume yep. that it can take on the memories of a person. So right. maybe it can't. We don't really know a lot about the thing. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a lot we don't know. That's but true. I, I assume that it can take on the personality of a person, and maybe the. Uh, it cannot tell. Do you think maybe the thing and it are related? <laughs> they might be. Because yeah, they're both weird aliens. Yeah, like we think of we think of it as like a as like a magic ghost thing, but it's really a weird alien. Yeah. Uh well, mm. so, so's it really because it arrives to Earth in a spaceship. Yeah. From another dimension or something. Yeah, right, right. So it's an interdimensional alien creature. Mm-hmm. Let's say you set some of the thing on fire. Yeah. Will the rest of it escape? Yeah, probably. You kind of have to kill every molecule of the thing. Exactly, yeah, down to right. yeah, down to molecular level. So I guess my question because I think I think it could probably like take the thing in a like if it was the thing was in human form, mm. it could probably like rip its arms and legs off yeah. or whatever. But then I think the thing would escape again. Yeah. Does it regenerate? Yes. Yeah. 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 A lot. Yeah, right. All the time. And it can be everybody. Yeah. It doesn't have to, it's not restricted to being one person Uh where I feel like it is limited in its scope in terms of what it can turn to. It's mostly a clown. It's mostly a clown. (laughs) It's mostly a clown doing that dance. dance. (laughs) Head stays still. But you you never see it. You never see 50 of them. No, that's true. Yeah. You know, it's always one. Yeah. And I think maybe, I, I don't know. I don't even know if the thing would need to have a psychological mind battle. I think it could probably duplicate itself enough to beat it to death yeah well that's what because in the in the last it movie mm. what happens to it they it's just a, beat it up and then where does and then it, it go? goes into hibernation down the in a well yeah like down in the earth I, con- I would consider that a victory okay like in this in this instance i would say that's the victory I, if the thing could do that and then get it in another 30 years get another 30 years yeah, yeah. once the thing has eaten everybody else in the town yeah. i guess yeah what fun that is fun yeah one more uh if i can find one more 
I mean, there's heaps. Uh, actually, this is from Daniel Roy. Each of the live-action Batman actors in their on-set Batman costumes. Hmm. A battle of grown men in tight, restrictive leather costumes. Man, well, I think Keaton's out. Is it? Yeah, because he he famously suit. he's famously he hated that costume and. It was very difficult. He'd be like a turtle. You kick him over. He's yeah, not yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, the the biggest challenge on that set was getting out of the bat, the Batmobile, the Batmobile yeah. and looking cool, yeah. doing so. Adam West, huge advantage because that's that silky costume. Yeah, mm, it's just all silk and nylon. Ooh, and it's uh, like they're all in armor, but yep. it's not actual armor. No, that's true. Yeah, but also you have to. I think you also have to think of the mindset of each of the actors. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, Bale seems. Insane. <laughs> yeah, I think it might go to bail really quickly. And he can quickly. turn his head. That suit's got a lot of <laughs> fluidity in it. Yeah, uh huh. That I think the other ones aren't afforded. No, we have to turn your entire body. There's a lot of big muscles I on think that. It, I think it comes. Suits. Yeah, I think it comes down to Adam West versus Christian Bale yeah. in this situation. <laughs> Just to clarify, I don't think Affleck. I think Affleck suit is too weighed down with fake muscles. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. I don't think that would be no. helpful at all. But he gets his tire. He gets his tire on a rope. Okay. Yeah, he gets to bring that in. But what does he do with it? Nothing. It's real heavy. <laughs> he flips it a couple of times and yeah, passes it. And he out. gives up, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But yeah, I think it's Adam West. I think the 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 the, the it comes down to Adam West versus Christian Bale. I mean, Chris- we're also talking kill McClooney, but I think we could probably because they're essentially the Burton suits where you yeah. can't turn the head. Uh huh. And they're just like a plastic that you're kind of stuck in. And I think they would also I think of those two, I think Kilmer has a has a bigger killer instinct. I think Clooney would savage. Clooney would walk away. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Clooney would apologize and walk away. <laughs> Do you think Adam West though could beat Bale? I don't think he's physically fit enough to do I it. I reckon he was at the time. Bale was like Bale was pretty ripped and big. Yeah. I mean that doesn't necessarily translate into a fighter, but at the very least, Christian Bale has some martial arts training. That I assume, real martial arts or no, I Hollywood, some, martial Hollywood martial arts. arts, but that Adam West doesn't right at all. I reckon Adam West could just clock him real hard. Like <laughs> I, I think it, it it would. I think it's one of those one. You know when you see two actual people scrap yeah. in a fight and it's just flailing and whatever. <laughs> oh, it'd definitely go down yeah. like that. I think yeah, it would definitely be that. I think it's more who gets in first. Yeah right okay. And I think maybe Bale would be have some sort of hold. Probably have like a like a rear choke or whatever, or a Krav Maga elbow. Yeah, exactly. But I think I think Adam West would just be like, he's pretty big. I he's think. big guy. Yeah. Yeah. Or he was. Yeah. What accent is Bale doing? American. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's in character. So he's fooled Adam West, and I think he's a fellow countryman. Adam West lets his guard down, then he gets choked. Do you think? Yes. That Bale would break character from doing the Batman voice, or he just or he'd be doing it. No, he'd be doing the voice. He's I in think. the suit, yeah. so he's yeah, doing yeah, the think, voice. Yeah, right? I think maybe that intensity would carry across. Okay. Yeah. So it is bail. I think it's bail, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. All right, I think that'll do it. Man, that's, that flew past. It did. Yeah, we've we got a whole bunch left. We're, we're well we'll into the one. episode. We'll do another one soon enough. In another two years or whenever we do the last one. two years. Hopefully do it less than then. Mm-hmm. But though, if people actually do have any of these scenarios and they actually like, hey, I think this would be interesting mm-hmm. and it might go like this. I would actually mind here. I wouldn't actually yeah, mind cool. hearing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Yeah. That would be pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I could... preface it by saying, I know you guys are right, but here's an alternate take, which is wrong. Yeah. And then explain <laughs> yeah. your theory, if you could. That's right, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, you know what it's time for, then? Oh, it's the time for what we're reading? It is. What we're going to read? It is. Ooh. Ba, 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 ba. I'm doing the thing. Ba, da, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba. bloody read well i haven't read it yet mm. because it's a tv show but yeah. i haven't watched it yet the good place is back i have a question about that for letters oh, do, do you want me to do it now uh yes and then we're one letter short okay. in the letter segment okay uh michael flack says hey mr Sunday movies and wiki really brown have you seen the good place recommended uh recommended to everyone in the new season take place in your exotic land of australia i'd love to hear you discuss it on weekly planet pod well look i have not seen it yet i have but apparently the australian accents are atrocious disagree really? some are better than others okay. a lot of them are real okay yeah there but even go. the fake ones are not terrible okay cool. i've heard much worse nice i think they're okay yeah uh there's one episode i think a week for the next 10 or however long Nice. How many, is it 12? 10 or 12 they do Who in knows? each season. Yeah. Who knows? Are you looking forward to getting back to that show though? Yeah. It's a great show. It's a good show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you remember how the last one ended and what they're doing in this season? I won't spoil it actually for people. Who yeah, don't spoil it. it. Yeah, yeah. Don't spoil it. I won't it. spoil if it. If you've never seen The Good Place, uh, Chris and Bell 
plays a woman who ends up in the good place, heaven, but she was a bad person on earth. Yep. So what's she doing there? That's the whole thing. What was she doing? And then? watch the season. And if you're like, man, I think about sitcoms is they get a bit stale after a while. This one does not. No. Yeah. Just when you think it's going to get stale. Mm-hmm. You know what I've been watching? <laughs> You've been watching. Reading. Uh, Doomsday Clock had another issue. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. How many issues are you behind now? All that? of them. Like, I think I think I read like three or four. Cool. Yeah. Uh, it, what are we up to? It answered some... Five, maybe? Okay, it great. Well, I'm some, not that far behind then. It answered some questions, uh-huh. but there was also extra questions and also a lot of stuff I'm like, who are any of these people again? Is it? And it's because it's so long between yeah. issues. Yeah. Because it was going to be one a month for a while. Okay. Was that the plan? Surely. I don't know. I, I think it was. It, was it? Okay. I feel confident that they were like, just like the original Watchmen, we're going to do one a year. Or we're going to do one a gonna, year. We're going to do one a month. And then it's going after a year, it's going to be the most amazing classic bloody series you've ever read. You'll love it. Mm, you'll love it. It'll, it'll You put it on your shelf next to Watchmen because it's so good. And then they were like, no, we'll get one out when we get one out. And they have done so that. Does it, so has it raised more questions than it answered? <laughs> yeah, it's a few, answers, uh, a few questions, yeah, okay. which I won't get into because you haven't read it and I <laughs> and, uh, don't want to spoil it. For well, I mean, this is this has been another episode of, what what do we call it? Watchmen Watch? Watchmen Watch, yeah. I think um, I really, I need to read it all together. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I, it's too far apart and, I, and I, I, I don't think it's as good as the original Watchmen. Of course it's not. Uh-huh. But at this point, yeah, I, I can't feel like I can't get a kind of a grasp on right. what but is, I think what it earlier, is. earlier when we when we talked about it in the previous ish episode of Watchmen Watch, uh, when I was still on board with Watchmen Watch, mm. I think I did say that some of the characters, the new characters, really felt like they yep. uh, belong in the Watchmen universe. That is still true. Having, yeah, I was yeah. going to say, having read a few more issues, you're still like, yeah, this this yeah. this jives with that universe. I'm still not 100% sure, and um, we've talked about this also, that they needed to bring in all the other DC characters. No. It, yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot. There's yeah. DC characters in this. Yeah. But the, apparently the, the finale is going to be Superman is going to be hanging out with this guy and they're going to have a big old chat and it's going to change the way we look at the world, you know? I hope so. Me too. It probably won't. No, it definitely won't. But you know <laughs> what it's time for? <laughs> Is it time for a coughing fit from you? Yeah. Huh. Now that that's I don't have done. a theme for that. Here's, here's the letters <laughs> theme. It's coming up. I oh, know. Letters. We we fade in. Yep, fade letters. in. Letters. <laughs> I respect you mixing it up with the no fade problem. in. Yeah, fade in, fade in was good, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you want to reach the show, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter, or you can also uh, shoot an email over to Mason at weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Scar. Do you want me to go first or do you want me to go first? No, I'm going go first. first. Okay, you sure? Going first with Joshua Scar. Because I have one ready if you need me to go first. No, I'm going first. I also have one ready. So, okay. say, hey, James and Meso, I spent Wednesday night through Saturday evening after suffering some complications from a minor surgery. My face was so swollen and full of pressure, I couldn't watch TV. Thankfully, I had a voice option on my devices and was able to listen to old The Weekly Planet episodes. Nice. As well as no roommate sorry. to have to worry about disturbing. We've disturbed many a roommate. <laughs> Uh, he's on the mend and he's back home. Oh, great. Uh, yeah. And uh, he wants to give a big old thanks to all the great mates in the Facebook group uh, to make the tough time away from the wife and kids more bearable. Absolutely. So bloody, yeah. bloody good to hear you're on the mend. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Man, that's tough. Good Facebook group, though. It's a, one of the best, mm-hmm. yeah. probably. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's probably a lot of better ones. <laughs> no, I disagree. Well, have you checked them all? Yes. Oh, well, then, yeah. I'm that's... in the prime of my life. I'm enjoying my youth. <laughs> and what I did in my youth was just read Facebook groups Endlessly, ad nauseum. And who says youth is wasted on the youth? That's true. Yeah. Mm. Oh, good on him. Yeah. It's from A. Patrick on Twitter. Ooh. As people who rep- uh, report on these things, do you guys ever feel we'll be privy? Uh, we sorry, feel like we're privy to too much information coming off movie sets. Do you think it'd be better if movie sets had a little uh, more privacy and we didn't get reports, set picks every five minutes, more surprises upon release? Absolutely, yes. Yes. I agree. Um. This reminds me of when Justice League was being filmed and they sent people down immediately to do reports on it. And this was a year before, well over a year before it came out. Mm-hmm. And then we got a trailer and then we waited 15 months or whatever. And then it yes, came out. Yeah. And it was uh-huh. already weird like, and there's, well, these guys are in it and there's going to be a vehicle that's like a spider in it and whatever. And, yeah, and right, then that right. movie turned it out. Look, it turned out better than we all thought it would. And well, everyone here had fun with it. No, I didn't. I, <laughs> I didn't have any fun with it. Should bad I stop movie. doing that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, I think it's fun. Um... <laughs> Specifically, I think the bit we're doing is fun, but the movie itself is not fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't try and spin that. I nearly got you. You nearly bloody, bloody got me. Um, yeah, I don't know, because... Some movies do go out of their way to 
hide stuff. Yeah, right. Like a lot of Marvel films and Star Wars or whatever. Uh huh. But other films are just like. Here's everything you'll ever need to know. Mm. Mm. And I understand that they need a bit of sizzle. Yeah. But I don't wanna I don't wanna I wanna see any of that. When you go into Robin Hood Origins, mm-hmm. yep. you don't wanna you don't wanna know what Jamie Foxx is up to. You wanna find out on the day. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah, is that right? Exactly You're right. You're not reading yeah. any set reports. Don't wanna read any set reports. Yeah. Do you read set reports or anything like that? No. I mean but the thing is, even if you don't, you get the headline. That's true, like, yeah. So said this. It's and... always like, you'll never guess what yellow wearing villain of Greenland is going to appear in the new Greenland. I'm like, well, who else is it going to be? Who was it? It's the Wizard. Ah, no, great. It's the... Yeah. <laughs> it's a Marvel yeah. character. It's not the Wizard. Yeah. yeah. I mean, also, even if, aside from this, you've got people endlessly speculating about trailers. You know like what us. I mean? Yeah. You, can never, you can never escape it wherever no, it goes. That's true, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I've, I've, I've talked about this. So I want to pick a Star Wars movie and watch nothing and yeah, going right. and maybe also I could do it with a Marvel movie one's coming out and I just don't look at anything huh. and I wonder if that would sway. go into the theatre don't look at anything never mm-hmm. face the opposite way yeah yeah. but I wonder like say would I have enjoyed Ant-Man and the Wasp more if I'd seen nothing of that film because by the time yeah. I'm in I'm like well I saw the bit when he was big and he rode a truck like a scooter that's you know? true yeah I saw that he got his wife out of a drinking zone <laughs> that's you know? true yeah uh-huh. what was that about yeah right but he did it mm. But yeah, I think the yeah, and I I think Marvel are very good. They they they're way better at than a lot of other people at at being you know. Be, but I think that's also a function of there's a often in those movies that especially like something like Infinity War, mm. there's so much happening in those movies that they can just go here's three scenes from the movie. Yeah. Here's here's some secrets and here's whatever, and we know that there's ten more scenes where you know that are surprising. Yeah. yeah. And it's movies that especially comic book movies that really only have one or two big action set pieces mm. and they have to show them for the sizzle and then we go in and we're not surprised at all. And then it's so, Age of Ultron. Yeah. So what I'm saying is every movie should be Transformers style, non-stop action, start to finish. Then we never know where the action's going to take That's place. That's true, or yes. What's happening. Or if it will at all. That sounds great. Mm-hmm, yep. More secrets. More secrets, please. I think they should just have also just cleverer marketing campaigns where yeah. the material that you're promoting it with is clearly not in the film but gets the hype for it. Yeah, right. And I think a really good example of that is the Terminator 2 trailer, which yep. is just Arnold on a conveyor belt and they just and he comes yeah, off and that, like, that, that's, back. Yeah, yeah, totally. But how do you do that for a for exactly. a new movie? Have we had the discussion where we kind of would prefer if just one day they're like, hey, new Star Wars movie's out. Yes, I'm or like sure a new, here's the new Marvel movie. Probably surprise. Yeah, I think, and I, th- I feel at this point, I feel Marvel could do it. Probably, yeah, yeah. Like they could just be like, Infin- Avengers Four is out. PS, mm. here it is. I don't. Maybe you could do it on something like that, that size. Uh-huh. Yep. But maybe you could do it on. Maybe you could even do it on like, yeah. Could you secretly film two at once? Yeah, right. Uh-huh. And then, yeah, I don't know. Mm. And we'll never know. We'll never know because they'll never do it. They'll never, they'll do never it. ever do it. And that's the show for this week, though, isn't it? Yes, it is. Why don't you wrap this show up, you son of a bitch? Rude, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> Just get settled. Okay. Here we go. I was right. going to sleep. Oh, no. <laughs> that's right. I'm putting my little robe on. I'm a little hat. I'm blowing out, I'm blowing out that candle. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Uh, let's see. Uh, thanks, everybody, for bloody listening. That's yeah. uh, five years. Thanks to everybody who's been listening for five years. No thanks to everybody who listened starting this week. Yeah, fuck off. Just kidding. <laughs> we love you just as much. That's no. right. No, see that's a slap. No. In the, see that's a slap in the face to people who've been listening. That's for what five I'm saying. Years. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. We don't love you as much. <laughs> Maybe we'll grow to love you as much. But you know who we don't love? People who stop listening. Yeah. At any point ever, <laughs> if you've ever stopped listening, even for a moment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Anyway, thanks for listening, subscribing, telling your friends. We bloody love that. That helps out a lot. Yeah. If uh, you want to contact the show, you can go to Weekly Planet Pod at Facebook and Gmail and Twitter and Bandcamp. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. You can also click through and find me bloody Instagram. I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies and I'm on Instagram and Twitter for those things. Yes, you are. Very and good. Facebook. Yeah. yeah. You can also follow, follow at The Weekly Planet where all sorts of Weekly Planet based news is happening. That's by our friend Rob Collings. What a legend. He also runs uh, the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. Yes. 10,700 members, I think, at this point. Whoa, right? yeah. we're nearly at 10,800. I know, right? That's, the, the, that's when we said we'd delete the group. That's true. We made a bet. And so some people better start jumping ship when we come up right, on that. That's right, exactly. That much. That's right, but we'll love you just as much. Yeah. Just remember that. Uh, you can also go to planetbroadcasting.com, sign up to our newsletter, which is great. Again, Rob Collings mm-hmm, doing mm-hmm. a bang-up job every week. Uh, let's see. 
If you want to support the show, that's important. Yes, it is. Uh, you know what? Thanks to everybody who we we reached our goal. I think we did it last week, but we're bloody we've exceeded our goal in the uh, Care Australia. Uh, Let me check in what we're up there. We're yeah, like forty two, forty two thousand dollars. Oh, that's more than we've ever raised. That's I great. know, right? Which is pretty wild. Thank you, everybody, for doing that. But now that's done. If you'd like to keep the lights uh, going, in oh, you can uh, still donate for that. Yeah, you still can. Way. That's yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. If you'd like to keep the lights going in the bloody uh, uh, Weekly Planet Man Cave, you can uh, go to. Uh, patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies if you want to chuck in a buck. Yeah, We'd really can. appreciate that. That would be very good. Uh, that'll help, help us uh, put together the new studio. That's We're right. We're doing all sorts of cool stuff. Hopefully video stuff. we'll be done by the end of the year. Yeah, Hopefully. Right. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. Who knows? There's also an Amazon affiliate link in yep. our episode description if you want to click through on there, uh, buy your regular Amazon stuff on there. We get a kickback somehow. Who knows how it works? Yeah. What's a funny thing they could buy this week? You know what? Batman costumes. Yeah, I'd like to see if, if you if various you, if you and five friends would like to go out and just buy all the assorted Batman costumes and YouTube yourself fist fighting. Oh, that'd be amazing. We'd really appreciate that. But Bale, if you're gonna, Bale do, has to win. Exactly. If you but if you want, no, there could be an upset. Okay. Be Kilmer will win. But anyway, if you'd like to do that, just do it through the Amazon affiliate link, and we uh, we get a little a tiny little piece of that somehow. We do, don't we? It's true. We've also got teas on tpublic.com. You just click through. And uh, bloody uh, bloody search for Weekly Planet. There's a whole bunch of designs on there. Get one, get yeah, I'm ten. Fine Design is is coming through strong, which I, I know really you're appreciate. a big fan, aren't you? I'm a big fan of that one. Great. Uh, let's see. Thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Arakam for all our musical themes. They come in and perform them live every week. I know some people think that I play that one through my phone, the no. Lettuce theme, but actually I call up um, the guy who did that. <laughs> who I've written as the in, in my phone his list as contacts the guy who came up with the letters theme and then he plays it through his he plays it live every single time and he's just, gosh darn good at it he's real, so good yeah. so good um, yeah that's the show that's I think. the show yeah, yeah. Uh, reviews always help I think you mentioned that anyway but yeah, they definitely help let uh, us know yeah. yeah what you think if alright yeah and next week you're never going to believe this Mason yes it's Venom time oh it's Venom time I can't wait Woo! to see how this oh, is you know going to turn out yeah. What we read and what we're going to read. Didn't I tell you I saw the movie Searching? Did I mention Which that last that? week? It's got John Cho in it. Oh, hey, that's great. It's really good. Yeah. So it's John. It's a. It's a. It's a crime movie. Mm. A murder. Uh, not a murder. It's a. It's a mystery movie rather. And John Cho's daughter goes missing, and he has to find her. But we only see it through various stuff on his computer. Yeah. So we see files. We see Skype. We see searches. We see chat logs. We see FaceTime. We never it never goes out. There's there's stuff in the real world, but we never it's never filmed like a movie. Yeah, right. So we, we always see it through a computer. It's really right. good. Okay. Really good. Awesome. Check that out. I went, did you go to the movies? I went to the movies. Wow, that's exciting. I know, right? I love the movies. You know, I've heard nothing but good things about that. You should see it. All right, and everyone should see Venom this week because uh, we're, <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to, but you what know. What if it's great? It better be either great or the worst movie. Because <laughs> if it's just Boring. I can't do this anymore. And I quit. I quit the podcast. We had a good run. Five yeah, years. we had a good run. Yeah, five years. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.